food. You probably... Yo, so we went to tailgate, but like we showed up oh, late to tailgating. Okay, okay. So we ended up just getting last minute tickets, and she got them, and it was just like, it was cool, man. Like we had an Eagles fan friend with us. That was yeah. cool. He was mad hype. That was funny. Um, then we went to Aaron's. He lives like across the street. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Um, after where we chilled for a while, it was just dope. I was mad drunk when you dropped yeah, your video. Listen, bro, I <laughs> I need a girl that could do all that for me too. But mm-hmm. like, I'm focusing on myself, King. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Speak, I, speaking of which, I got I got I got to ask you something later. What's up? Oh, no. later. All right, later. Um, all right, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, for the announcements for today, uh, to all of our YouTubers, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, I'm going to say thank you a lot. You you guys know this. I wanted to inform everyone I started my own channel. I've had my own channel for a very long time, probably like two to three years now. Um, Yeah, so... I dropped my long-awaited Joy Boy theory that I've been keeping in my back pocket since the second time Parvision has been in studio, which was like Mm -hmm. six to eight months ago by this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I edited the video myself. I took huge inspiration from Tachi, and then I also went above and beyond by just creating something that was super dope. So if you go on my channel... Uh, the link is going to be in the description or in the live chat in a few seconds. But it's about Joy Boy. It's about Joy Boy's graveyard. I believe that Emu showed us Joy Boy's graveyard uh, during his, you know, major debut. And uh, I. Thank you so much, Celestial. Uh, we got a $2 super chat from our guy, James Hudson. It says, hashtag, Larry has bad takes. <laughs> hashtag, buggy gang. You knew that one was coming too, man. Yeah, it always comes. Wait, you get a lot of oohs in the chat, by the way. Oohs? Ooh. Oohs? It means you're cute, bro. They, they attracted to you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I got one too. Oh, yeah. Sebastian yeah. deserves all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, oh, we got a, another $5 super chat from James Hudson. It says, hashtag Lionel isn't real. Yo, James, you can't tell our <laughs> secrets like that, bro. It's, it's, it's not okay. All right. Uh, we got another subscription to Yonko status from our guy Celestial Donkey. Thank you so much, man. Enjoy yes. all of the emojis and things that come with being Thank a you. member of Thank the you. channel. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, we got a twenty dollars super chat from our guy Joy Boy Mark. Uh, it says hashtag Seb has best takes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much, man. Of course. <laughs> Seb doesn't actually have good takes. Shut up. Yeah. Takes are fire. Uh, we got another five dollars super chat from Celestial Donkey. It says hashtag Rap God Larry. Listen, Larry got bars. New York. <laughs> he got bars, bro. I'm not even gonna front. I'm not gonna front. I've been in the lab with him. Yeah. He can spit. B A R S. Bars. Bars. <laughs> All right. Oh, I missed one. You, you know what, Marv, you got to get? That alert that goes, Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. I don't, I don't know if that's copyrighted or not. Don DeMarco. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, we got another $2 super chat from James Hudson. It says, hashtag Larry drop bars. Yo, listen. I'm Don willing to Marco, dedicate Marco. an entire section of this podcast to you spitting right now. Hold on. If you doubt. So, so I, how about this? How about this? One of these days, I'll just let Marv play the intro music, <laughs> and then I'll just go off on it hey, for, man. like, a couple seconds. <laughs> One of these days. Listen, man. <laughs> I think I think our fan base would like that. Yeah, I was going to say, I Marv, think those are kind of loud. <laughs> I think we have a nice blend of, like, yeah. people who are into rap slash into <clears throat> anime, manga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think they would enjoy that. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> They're saying champagne buggy. <laughs> That's funny. Um, we got another twenty-seven dollar ninety-nine cents. I don't know why I did the. I didn't round up for that one. It's the first one I didn't round up for. Um, from Nick, it says, "Hi guys, how you doing? Can't wait for this video. Latest chapter was one of my favorite in a while. I think I'm speaking for." Reverting? I think he means everyone. When I say thank you guys for all of your work that you do, love y'all. Thank you so oh. much, Nick. We really, we really yeah. do get sentimental sometimes up here. Him, I do. Him specifically. Especially me. Um, but we'd really appreciate all the support that we get from you guys, um, whether it's super chatting, liking, sharing the video, just being in the Discord, communicating. It's, it's really awesome to be a part of this community. Um, Holy shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to curse. Come on, bro. Um, but it's just, it's awesome interacting with all of you guys, man. It's why we do the content that we do. Um, you guys make it worth it every single day, every week, every extra thing that we do in regards <laughs> to the, the, the podcast. So. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. Guys. <laughs> CD, oh, bro. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, we got a, uh, another $2 super chat from Soga King. It says, Larry got L takes for fire bars. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. ARS bars. <laughs> uh, we got another ten dollars from Joy Boy Mark. It says, "Hey guys, quick question: the guy on the cover of this chapter, I feel like we've seen before. Do you guys recognize him?" P.S. Much love from everyone this holiday. Uh, that is Dufeld, if I remember correctly. Yeah. He is AKA a, Lufeld. <laughs> he is uh, one of the people who was invited to the wedding that Big Mom was hosting, the tea party. He showed up with, like, Stussy. And, yeah, and, so like, he's, he's an underground emperor, which is yeah. the god of fortune. Yeah. We will get into that cover chapter, uh, cover story, because everything about this chapter is very talk-worthy, so it's probably best the twins wasn't here, because we're <laughs> going to have a lot to say. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the super chats. Yeah. Uh, we, got a, we got some more. <laughs> As you can tell. Uh, we got a $2 super chat from Mr. Bushido. The boy uh, It says, I want to see a Sulong Carrot versus Luchi. Um, why? <laughs> she would get smoked, bro. <laughs> She'd probably get smoked. I'm going to be honest with you. I love Carrot, but god damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys, bro. <laughs> we got another $2 from Monkey D. Juice. It says, Larry doesn't have bad takes. He just wild it. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can see that. I can see that. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, I really don't be wild nah, enough. No, you bro. Wilding, bro. I have the greatest mix of, like, speculation and evidential proof. Like, uh -huh. that's it. Like, I don't go off narration completely. Like, uh -huh. some bozos do. What you mean? Listen. I not understand. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we got another $2 from Monkey D. Shin. It says, I don't want to hear no kid slander. Hashtag. Kid Pirates Gang. Listen, bro. Uh, you're gonna if there's like garbage it. around, he has to get mentioned mm -hmm. at least once. Mm -hmm. uh, we got another five dollars from Mogul B. It says nothing. Mogul, you got to say something when you, <laughs> you you super chat. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate the support and the love, yes. man. But did you, you use the CDs yet? Not yet. Oh, there's just so many super chats in here. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, if you guys are gonna super chat, please have a comment, whatever yeah. it is, even if it's just an emoji, something, you know. Uh -huh. um, 
We got another seven dollars from Nick. It says Larry should do an anime rap song. I'd be with that. I don't know if you would be with that. That shit is cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's little a little cringe. cringe. That's cringe. Uh, a little bit. Just, yeah. just a little. I yeah. mean, you got a lot of anime that you like. I feel you, but yeah. Just rhyming with like Ross and Gun just nah, doesn't cut don't, it for don't, me. Don't don't. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that, bro. Uh, we got another two dollars from Mr. Bushido. It says, "Ha ha, I have uneasy vibes with Gear Five Luffy." Uh, what do you think about that? We'll get into it. Right. Yeah, so a lot of the questions that you guys are asking, we're definitely going to get into them in the chapter. So mm -hmm. give us some time. Yeah, uh, this one isn't in the chapter. It's a $100 super chat from our guy, Celestial Donkey. It says, hit us with some bars, Larry. Hashtag Rap God Larry. Hashtag Buggy Gang. I got a fight CD one day. Yo, CD? This is what it's coming wow. down to, yo. yo like, yo. we got to get a pool, mad KY, and just go off, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo! <laughs> yeah, just like the old school movie. Oh, uh, but we thank you so much, CD. Yes, thank you. Larry will be thank spitting you. bars on this channel at some point. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> All right? I'm going to make it happen. Um, we got another $2 super chat from EVK Toby. Uh, it says... Larry is greater than Prime Little Wayne. <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, Lil Wayne was Larry's favorite rapper for like a clean like listen, bro, five six years listen, there, bro. He listen. loved Lil Wayne. Listen, bro. bro, Lil Wayne from like '08 to like oh like, well like '10, mm -hmm. dude was just putting out Yo, every day. Bro. The, the thing is, it was earlier than that. Yeah, it was. It was, at, it was like it was like when was when did Fireman drop? Like Hot Boys even like. Yeah, it was a while back before that. He wasn't the number one rapper in like two thousand no. and like two, but he was he was still fire back then you, too. You were just scared that he was just gonna jump on your beat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when my name come up, respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And we got another nine dollars super chat from our guy. Oh, actually, one second, I skipped one. We got a two dollars super chat from Mogul B. Thank you, Mogul. Um, he commented this time. It says, "Larry, let's talk dragon." <laughs> <laughs> Probably, so, yeah. So this video, the video I posted, is, you've seen it, right? Yeah, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So everybody was going off, and it, it generated a lot of hype. And it's still going. Yeah, they were trolling you in the comments. Oh, section, yeah, yeah, yeah. It I was know, so I funny. Know. I, think, yeah. I think you did yourself a disservice because you didn't take the con, you didn't, like, include enough of the context. Oh, of, of course. why we oh, were arguing I know. I know. in the video clip. I know. So yeah. they just hear you saying what you said, and it just sounds crazy. I know. <laughs> um, but... It is what it is. I I'm took the fun. most, like, engaging part of that conversation. Uh, like, from the very second you saw it, you were like, wait, what? And mm -hmm. I took that part. And I was like, yeah, that's the best. Yeah. It was it was a good little yeah. TikTok clip. Listen, bro, I ain't afraid to look bad, bro. I, I sent it to a couple And people. it wasn't bad. You heard me. It was just... I did. You just sounded wild. You, you did. Yeah, keep going. All right. Um... We got a $9 super chat from our guy, Ghani. If y'all don't follow Ghani on TikTok, he's dope. Um... But we got, uh... Super chat from Ghani. It says champagne buggy. I love that. We need to hashtag that. It's, it's champagne super buggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says we need that OP rap content for real. Also, just had to send some love, man. You men are creating the best One Piece community. Also, Larry, what those international calls saying? With oh the yeah, dots. so international calls. I thought we had that going the whole time, more, but we don't, right? So. Uh, so you don't know. All right, all right. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know what about. Marv, like, Marv said that he's gonna look it up. He's gonna look it up. So by so. that you mean like for them to be able to call the, the? I thought we were getting international calls. Didn't we get some? We got. I thought. Um, I thought Jaheim. we got. Yeah, I thought. From, yeah, yeah, Jamaica. I thought that we got one from him, but mm. that might have been before we had Google Voice. I don't mm. know, but keep okay. going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got uh, another five dollars from Mr. Bushido. It says Kizaru is Vegapunk's brother. Been calling it for a year now. We will get Sabaody 2.0. I think <laughs> Sulong Carrot can take Luchi. She and Perospero are like Yonko three level. Uh, Commander, they're talking. About. Yeah, YC three. Yeah. Um, that's that's false, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see. We're, we're gonna get into that. This is gonna. Well. I'm telling you, this chat after we're done with the super chats, you're gonna get. It's just gonna be nonstop. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they keep coming in. Yeah, uh, we got another two dollars from Red Hair Shank. Them it says Larry never been wrong according to Larry. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. That is true. Yeah. Oh man, and it says we got another one from Shin. Five dollars. It says 
Let's go, CD. LOL. We can do this. Hashtag postpone the chapter review. <laughs> Don't postpone the chapter review. You need to do the chapter review. Yeah, yeah, shit is so funny. Um, did Before we get into the chapter, did we want to... Did you create a goal for the Chestnut Hime thing, or are we not doing that? No, I talked to them, and they didn't, they didn't, say, they didn't say, like, a goal or anything okay. like that. Okay, all right. Then, well, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. Also, shout out to the ladies. Word. Well, that's all, that's all the Super Chats for now. All right, bet. All right, guys, so let's go into the, the chapter a little bit. And now, our feature presentation. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> we Marv with the alerts time. today. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... As we open a new chapter of One Piece, we are welcomed by another cover story. It's titled, All Things Are Brought Into the World With Hope. On the cover, we see an emperor of the underworld by the name of Dufeld, aka the God of Fortune, in front of a Mads ship. Under in quotes, it says, Lone Shark King Dufeld's Charitable Research Lab for Peace, Mads. What did you think, Sebastian, about the cover story? Uh, so... I thought it was cool. I mean, it's always good to see these underground people. Um, apparently, this is the dude that's be funding the Mads, or he's looking to fund Mads. I was trying to understand exactly <laughs> what we were, you know, seeing here. Yeah. Um, there was a huge theory that somebody created. I don't know if you saw this or not. Mm. That, like, Frankie... Yes. Yeah. I, I, I can't really elaborate on because I saw it when I was drunk, and I'm trying to remember how it was. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, you, you can to. do yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I don't have much on this cover. It was it was cool, whatever, Dufeld. Okay. Yeah. So, for me, I thought the, the, the cover story was so interesting. So, I went over the entire chapter, and I reviewed it with Chestnut. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that chapter review, it's amazing. We came up with, like, 50 theories. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. But when I first looked at this, I couldn't tell if this was, like, the current or the past. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't too sure. Thank you guys for all the super yeah, chats. It just, keeps super it just keeps coming. So I was I was like, yo, is this the future? Is this the past? I really don't know. But I'm pretty sure this is the future because the flag on top of the ship also says pacifist. So I'm pretty sure that's where Vegapunk or, you know, the pacifistas came from, uh -huh. you know, in order to symbolize what they are. But also it was pretty... It, it looks pretty current. And then, you know, shout out to Roger Bass because I was on uh, TikTok and I noticed that he placed a uh, a thought into my mind regarding that in chapter 358, page three, Frankie is, you know, he got hit by the sea train and he's like unable to move. And then all of a sudden there's this ship that appears. And this is a ship that he fixed himself on where he built, like, his front body, but not his back body, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he turned himself into a cyborg from this ship. Now, in this ship, it looks very, very, very similar to the cover story uh, ship that we're seeing in the newest chapter. It has the same bottom linings. It has the same uh, cannons on the bottom. But the only thing about the ship that Frankie was on was that this ship was basically abandoned. So you can see like the sails are, are very torn. You see that when Frankie gets on it, there's like bars that are like broken. You see like there's, there's broken barrels everywhere and like garbage. But this is where Frankie technically like fixed himself. So if this is to be true, mm -hmm. these do seem like two different ships, but this is 711 chapters later. So Oda probably just like revised what happened mm -hmm. or this was a ship from the past that had technology on it from Vegapunk's experiments or science, like the scientist group that was assigned to him. They abandoned it. Mm -hmm. Lufeld or Dufeld found the ship since he's the god of fortune. He probably went bank into the ship mm -hmm. and then was like, yo, government i found the ship yada yada do you like can we like work something out like a deal and now there's current scientists on that ship uh you know rehashing or just going about their business with vegapunk's technology still so the biggest thing that me and Ve uh chestnut came to was like what's the purpose of killing vegapunk you're losing such a valuable aspect right of your your combat power your military force right like he's a main supplier well, the only reason they would want to take out Vegapunk is if they had other people who could perform his work, you know, that they felt like he couldn't mm -hmm. produce anything else. And if anything, if he produced anything else, then it would be a danger to themselves, right? 
So this would fit that this old ship in 358 is now a new ship with new scientists that is doing what Vegapunk is doing. Mm-hmm. So they don't just have one fort. They don't have one man that can no, just I, change the tide. They have a whole science group now. So you think they're bringing Mads back and he's going to fund it and it's going to yeah. be... That's one of the reasons why they're willing to clip Vegapunk because they yes. can recreate Mads without him. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, they would be wrong. <laughs> Vegapunk's clearly above them as far as what he's doing or what he's capable of doing. But at the same time, if you're can, if you questioning his loyalty mm-hmm. or if it got out that he's communicating with dragons like, all right, bro. Yeah. I'd rather clip him and then deal with or deal with whatever Mads is giving me. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just so, if it's a lesser stuff, mm-hmm. if I can't trust this person then what are we talking about? So Yeah. yeah I can see that. You, you don't ever <laughs> want to fire somebody if you don't have a replacement in mind, man. Unless yeah. you have to. You know? And that and that seems to be the case, yeah. which is pretty dope. But yeah. um yeah, let's get into the second round of super chats. Yeah, we got a lot sitting. So uh, thank you guys so much for all the donations. Um, we got five dollars from CD again. Uh, it says, "Let's go, Larry. Put on the gloves. I'll throw a goat at you." <laughs> Hashtag postpone stream. Uh, and then we got a five month membership to Yonko from CD as well. That says, "Hashtag postpone stream." Uh, we got a two dollar super chat from Luchi. It says, uh, "From Soga King." It says, "Luchi gets oh cooked God. by carrot." Hashtag buggy gang. Listen, I love Carrot, y'all. She's not being Lucci. Like, y'all, y'all wallow with this right now. Uh, we got another $2 super chat from Monkey D. Shin. It says, CD, my brother in arms, LOL, hashtag, buggy gang. <laughs> we got another $2 from CD. It says, how was you guys day today? Hashtag postpone the stream. <laughs> <laughs> My day was pretty good. My you guys day was are, pretty you good. Guys are dicks, it was bro. actually busy for me today. How was yeah, your day, bro? Yeah, I was I was alright. I mean, I've been up since like three in the morning. Mm, maybe. Yeah. yeah, you sent me a video mad early, bro. Yeah. And bro, I like just woke up bro, at like five AM. So I was like, trying oh. to I was trying to fix my sleeping schedule because I've been staying up way too late for like months now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, I wanna hit the gym like consistently i want to eat good you know i want to do my thing mm-hmm. right and then like i went to sleep at like 12 woke up at three couldn't go back to sleep bro oh, wow. yeah Jesus. it was crazy bro larry sent me the funniest video i've seen in a minute at like 5 a.m and my girl was like yo shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh we got a uh membership to nakama status from eric adams thank you so much eric uh please enjoy all the emojis and the emotes that you get with the uh, membership. Yes, thank you. Uh, we got another two dollars from <laughs> Celestial Donkey. It says, "Hi, Marv." <laughs> Bucky gang. Yo, Marv, that's why you laughed. Oh man. Yeah, I think Marv laughed at Marv, one point. Marv did laugh at one yeah, point. Yeah, right. Man. Marv had a whole visitor come in. It was it was weird. It was weird. Anyway. Marv, you gotta get rid of that. What, alert, what is bro. that? <laughs> <You gotta laughs> Every time you play it. Oh man. We got another two dollars from Tachi D Spins. Yo, shout out to Tachi, man. Yes, thank you. He Tachi. dropped recently too, man. It was fire. Crocodile, Cypher Pole. I love it, man. I love how wacky the One Piece theories get. But he says deserved. Um, I appreciate that, man. Seriously, we do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Super uh, thank you. Shoot, I lost my place, lost my place. There we go. Uh, we got another five dollars from Soga King. It says, Where's Strahd at? I've been I ain't been threatened to be stabbed all stream. Hashtag post postpone the stream. So hashtag buggy. Apparently yeah. Strahd has other kids in other states <laughs> yeah, that, that he has to take care <laughs> don't of. Do that to so he's he's doing his fatherly duties. Listen, don't do that to Strahd. <laughs> Strahd did say a weird thing that he was gonna be away for a couple days because he had some panhandling to do. Yeah. I don't know what he was referencing, but I just assumed he was moving weight. But yeah, um, Strahd will be MIA for a little bit, bro. Yeah. But he here in spirit. He yeah. Here in spirit. He's here in spirit. All right, uh, we got a fifty dollars super chat from our guy Fourth Face. Thank you so much. Thank Fourth you Face. so much, Fourth. It says amazing community to be a part of and can't stay long. But wanted to say the content you guys have been doing gets me through the each week, through work each week. Much love to all of you guys in the Discord too. Hashtag Larry the God. Hashtag Marv on the beat. Yeah, <laughs> Fourth face. Thank you. We appreciate so much. it, man. Hopefully so you were still around for us to read your super chat. Um, but I know you'll be doing the spin back to, to watch the streams later. So Yes. Thank, thank you, you so much, man. Thank you. You guys are nuts, bro. Oh man. We got another 
Two dollars from Tachi D Spins. It says this is from Ragnar. Hashtag fraud punk. <laughs> Ragnar, aka Lord Vegeta, on the YouTube channel, be hating on Vegapunk. I don't know what it's about. Yo, apparently he he loves uh uh what's that dude with the dreads, the R and B singer, the king of R and B. I forgot his name. The king of R. He came out the the. King of R and B. Yeah, you remember the Charlie artist? Wilson, bro? No, bro. not Charlie Wilson, bro. <laughs> August Alex, who you talking about? No, Jaheem. 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 No, 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 it's not Jaheem. It's not Jaheem. It's the other guy. The one with the dreads, bro. With the dreads? What yeah, what he, song? he called himself the king of R&B and everybody got like... Oh, Jaquees. Jaquees. Yo, he, yo, he was singing Jaquees in the Discord, bro. This shit was hilarious. Yeah. And nobody knew. Was he hitting the notes? Jaquees can yo, sing. Yo, he was all right, man. Yo. He was all right. Oh, my God. I had a fun time, bro. That is too funny. It was probably like 4 a.m. too, wasn't it? It was late. Oh, my God. You can't be singing Jaquees, man. Yeah, bro. I was, I was soothed, bro. All right, Yo, Ragnar's going. a weird dude. Yeah, bro. he's funny. He loves Jinbei, too. Uh, we got another $5 super chat from our guy, Mr. Prince. It says, everyone, like the stream. <laughs> yes, please, like the stream. Like uh, the we stream. are currently at 122 concurrent viewers. Yes. We're only 51 likes. So if you guys really do appreciate the content or really want to support, please drop a like. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Um, it does. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I'm trying to get back to my place. Every oh time I scroll, guys, up. we gotta do that chapter. All right, we got another two dollars from Celestial Talkie. It says, "No, you got to read this hashtag post post." <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Donkey, I know you're working, bro. Oh man, uh, we got another five dollars from Tachi. It says, "Donate five hundred dollars for a music video of Larry and Seb as Dofi and Croc in a music <laughs> video." Um, <laughs> I would definitely be Crocodile. You could be Dofi, bro. I yeah, feel like that I, would work. I, yeah, I think that's the best way to go about it. I'm with it, bro. I'm yeah, with that it. would be... That would actually, be 500 for a whole music video? No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. We could do a little skit or something mm -hmm. on TikTok. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we got another $2 from Celestial Donkey. <laughs> this is abuse at this point. Uh, it says, Marv the Goat, hashtag Marv the Best. Marv, you getting love today, man. Our, our next yeah. super chat about Marv, Marv too. Marv mad love today. Next super chat about Marv too. We Marv, you might as well just sit over here. <laughs> we got ten dollars from James Hudson. It says, "Yo, Marv, how far have you made it into the story?" Marv, you got to speak to the people and let them know where you've gotten in One Piece, man. Oh, can they God. hear you? Can, they can't hear. Uh, so where are you? Oh, so he's he, at Baratier. He's still though. at Baratier. No progress. No progress whatsoever. We're disappointed in you, Marv. Throw, throw potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, and Marv in the chat, man. All right. Yeah. We got another two dollar super chat from Monkey D Shin. It says, "Let's just play the silent game." Hashtag postpone the stream. I don't think that would work for us, man. I don't think that would work. I don't know what our ratings would be like if we just played the silent game. Um, and then finally. We got a $5 super chat from our girl, the Chestnut Tanuki, who just dropped the other day as well. She does. Go check out Chestnut's newest <laughs> video on her channel. It is also super dope. So much new content out, man. Yeah, there's a lot of new content out. So much new content, man. Horns of Jericho. Anyway, um, but we got $5 from Chestnut. She says, make sure y'all talk about the translation differences. TCB and Viz got different connotations. Hashtag. Yeah, buggy so gang. So we've been trying to get there, and we <laughs> just can't move along. <laughs> we try. Uh, we got another two super. Uh, two dollars from Soga King. It says Marv, who's your favorite character so far? It's Sanji so far. We'll, we'll see That's if that what he said, if that Sanji. holds up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> And then we got a five dollar super chat from Nick Quavo. It says "Streets Missing Stride." Yeah, man, Stride's the boy. All right, are we all caught up. That's that's everything. All right, finally, guys. <laughs> you guys are nutty, bro. All right, so <clears throat> the chapter uh, the chapter starts off with Vegapunk's assistants running because Atlas was attacked. Luffy. While carrying Bonnie, notices the CP0. Luffy yells at Luchi and asks him, oh what's he doing here? Luchi responds, it's a government island, and Luffy goes, good point. Kaku warns Luchi not to attack them since Luffy's an emperor now. They need approval to do so. 
Luffy hands Bonnie to Jinbei and runs towards Atlas. She's broken and unconscious. Luffy tells Chopper to help her, but Chopper says this is Frankie's expertise. Luchi tells Luffy not to interfere, and Luffy replies, she fed us. We head back to the naval headquarters, and Akainu is shocked the Straw Hats are on Egghead Island. Akainu says his... Uh, says this is declaration of war and he wished CP0 talked to him first. He admits that if Vegapunk goes to the Straw Hat side, they lose a major source of combat power. He then asks where Kazaro and where's Kazaro? And they explain Kazaro was already on his way for a prior operation. Question to you, Seb. How did you feel about this little piece of the chapter? Alright, alright. So this chapter was amazing. Also, did you read the Viz translation? Yes. Okay. Well, this chapter's amazing. And you already know me, bro. Anytime I see a Kainu on, on panel, I fangirl a little bit. That's my guy. Yeah. And just one, we should have predicted Luffy's reaction because Atlas did feed them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, he's never going to be cool with that. Like, her getting bodied in that way. But my favorite, the little things about the chapter that I really, really enjoyed and that I liked, right? One, Luffy hands Jinbei Bonnie. Right, mm. and he tells Chopper to help with Atlas. Right, mm-hmm. it's I'm going jumping ahead a little bit, but this is a small thing. Later in the chapter, you see Jinbei holding Atlas and Chopper holding Bonnie. At some point behind the scenes, they switched places mm-hmm. because Atlas is too heavy for Chopper to carry. <laughs> that that's something that happened. But in general, just more important stuff. I like the interactions. Luffy was like ready to fight Luffy anyway. Like he was like, "Yo, I'm I'm ready to." test my medal against Ayanko. And I love how they speak about Luffy mm-hmm. in this way, where it's like, yo, he's he's Ayanko. We can't just go attack him, right? Like, we have to get word back. We have to get permission to do this because this is engaging in something that could blow up into an entire incident. They keep framing and focusing like, yo, this could blow up into a bigger thing because mm-hmm. of Luffy's status. And I don't know, that just gives me like that feeling like we really, we're here now. Like, we're here where Luffy's looked at in that light. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, you can't mess with Shanks' people. <laughs> Remember back in the day where they said, yo, he's one of Whitebeard's men. You can't touch him. Mm-hmm. So, like Buggy said it about Ch- Ace. Luffy's there now. Like, this is the respect that he's getting across the world. And I love that. Kazara was already on his way? Mm-hmm. What'd that mean? Bushido already alluded to his little theory about the, him and Vegapunk being brothers. But what, what was the mission? What was the operation? It wasn't this. Yeah. So what was the operation? Um, it's uh, There's so much here, man. And even, it's something that Morge did in a video in the past where he was talking about characters being looked at as assets, right? Like, Vegapunk isn't just a scientist. He's an asset to the world government right now. They're talking about him switching sides to go onto a Yonko ship and becoming an asset for them because they're in this Cold War setting, war, Cold war setting where it's like, yo, everybody's accumulating power. And it's like, we can't just lose Vegapunk, right? If we, if we kill him, that's one thing. We can't lose him to an enemy in mm. this light. So I just love the framing. I love that whole section of the chapter. It was so dope to me. I don't know what you got, but I just, I really loved all that, man. I yeah. Did. No, I think you hit it right, you know, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, I thought it was really nice. Like, there was, like, little touches. Like, mm-hmm. even even the little, hey, Chopper, yeah. help atlas and he's like no i can't this is frankie's expertise yeah, it was funny. i was like yo i think i got excited because anything that happens with frankie during this arc just means like something mm-hmm. cool is bound to happen mm-hmm. or something needs to happen like we all want frankie to have like his moment and i think that anytime he's brought up it just makes the chapter a little bit more exciting so it was really nice i love same thing with you i love the fact that luffy was like getting this respect so like when the chapter first started and i read this i was like yo this is so dope yeah i i, I don't like Luchi. I don't like the CP0. I, I don't mm-hmm. like specifically like Luchi yeah. and Kaku. But I wish they were new characters. But when I saw that, I was like, yeah, bro. We here, dog. Yo, we here, bro. <laughs> yo, we, we made here, it, bro. bro. It's been, yo. Bro. Yo, we here, <laughs> bro. We here, We bro. here. We're here. It's crazy. So it was nice. It was nice to see like Luffy's getting that respect. And it's well deserved. I mean, from the get-go, when, when I said he versed Kaido. Mm-hmm. Kaido, Kaido had like the, the 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 main thing with Kaido was that he just looked unstoppable, and to know that 
Luffy defeated him, they should look at Luffy now as kind of like unstoppable. Like right. like Luchi even like trying to it's wild. should be crazy because that, that's like fighting Kaido at this point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was really nice to see that. Um, other than that, I mean, I think I'm getting a little exhausted from like being blue balled by a kainu <laughs> because it makes me frustrated. I'm tired okay. of seeing him behind the desk. Yeah, bro, get out of that chair. Yeah, and you know what's crazy? I was talking to Chestnut about it too, and I was like, listen, like, I think it's gonna be, I think it's like Oda setting setting us up for always seeing a kainu be frustrated. And he's always behind a desk. He always have to, he always has to have like other people uh-huh. like do his bidding or do the things that he wants to do. But when a time comes and he's able oh, to like, I think it's gonna be the first time we see somebody with their coat. He's just gonna take off his coat and just walk towards the battle mm-hmm. and just be like, "I've been waiting for this." I Yo. think that would be dope as hell Bro, if that happened you, because the build up would yeah. be there. It's funny because I remember I had that same feeling when Sengoku rolled his sleeves up at Marine Forward. Yeah. But like if he full blown goes like, yo, nah, fuck that. Uh, yeah, I'm he just takes this. his coat off. I'm doing it. And he's just like, let's get it. Yo, I'd be that so hype. Yo, I'd be yeah, I'd be so hype. Um, so as for the Vegapunk uh being traded off, I think that's honestly every anybody would worry. Yeah. Anybody would worry. He's an asset. They, he's always been an asset. He's never really been, the, you know, for the government ever. I didn't think too much of that. Mm. But I did come up with an idea for Kizaru. So, I think that since we find out later in the chapter that Sentu Maru obviously is on the island and he's been, like, the bodyguard for Vegapunk, mm-hmm. I think he was good because, you know, Sentu Maru calls him uncle, even though he's probably not his real uncle. I think that Kizaru was just going there to have tea. <laughs> It's set an operation though. Yo. Well, it could be it could be the guy. Wouldn't, or something, wouldn't it be the most like be older thing, thing ever? Yeah, yo, Kazaro doesn't really go on missions unless there's like super threats, but there's no threats on Egghead. And they weren't yeah. talking about assassinating him beforehand. So why what else would he go? Mm-hmm. If not to have some tea with Sentomaru? Yeah. I mean maybe. Maybe 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 so my line of thinking was Vegapunk has done so much with Kizaru's ability so far. Yeah. Maybe he just does extra with him. Like, he's like, yo, like, I need like to run Like, he has tests. to recharge or just, something? Or just, I have to run more tests or something. Yeah. Like, it said operation, so I thought it was something official. It could totally be something stupid. Like yo, that. right? <laughs> totally I feel like it's just, yo, let's have I tea. Know. I don't know. I All just right. feel like there's something you could get out of Kizaru um, yeah. on Egghead. But, okay. Mm. Before we get into the, the bigness of the, the, the meat of the chapter, let's hit these super chats. Yeah, uh, we got a hundred dollars super chat oh from Celestial Donkey. It says, Marv, get in the room. Want to hear you say hashtag buggy gang. <laughs> hashtag postpone the stream. <laughs> CD, man. You... <laughs> CD, thank you so much. You work so damn hard, bro. I feel so bad. Jesus, man. Yeah. He be, he be wilding sometimes. Yeah. Man. Such uh, a good guy, man. But seriously, we appreciate it. Um, yes, thank you. We got a $10 super chat from Steven Luizo. It says, or Luizo, it says, Hey, boys, miss you both and the, both the imaginary twins the most. Been busy. But Spotify listens are 90% me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the community. Hey. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much, Steven. And guys, when you guys were posting your Spotify raps, that warmed my heart so much to see how much we are yeah, part of what y'all listen to on Spotify, man. That yeah. was blowing my mind when I was seeing that rap. Yeah, bro. that was wild. I was like doing the math to calculate like how many hours that is. How yeah, many it was. It that's, was. That's crazy. It was awesome, man. That's why I always, I always have to say thank you to you guys Seriously. so much. It's insane. And then we got a fifty dollars super chat from our guy Joy Point Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. Oh my God. It says, "I agree to see Luffy finally getting the respect that he deserves after so long. I was giddy like a schoolgirl. <laughs> I I fully fully agree, man. Yeah. Thank was, you, Mark. It's just been a long journey to yes. here, bro. Yes, it's been a long one. A long one. So, yeah. but yeah, that's all the super chats for we now. We here, bro. We here." That was that was it. That's all super chat for now. All right, all right, all right. So, if you haven't read, uh, so many of us read TCB. All right, TCB is amazing. They do very well with their translations. It's the reason why we don't read any of the other people's earlier. But there was a huge part of this chapter where like we needed the official trans um, from Stephen Paul. I, b- I believe he's still the official yeah, translator so. for Viz. 
And uh, this, if you haven't read the chapter, it makes this chapter completely different. So let's get into it. This is going to be me talking for a little bit, but it's because this specific part of the chapter had a lot of dialogue and it needs to be concise and clear. So we head back to Egghead and we see Luffy in battle with Luchi. The Sanji Straw Hats notice that Luchi looks different. Shaka explains that it's usually the case that awakened Zoan powers absorb and control the user's personality. Then we see Luchi in his awakened leopard form. Luchi explains Luffy's not the only one who got stronger. Then Vegapunk suddenly bursts through the doors and Ve uh, Frankie fangirls out with hearts in his eyes. Vegapunk's, uh, Vegapunk asks everyone if the warrior in white appeared. He wants to know what this transformation of Luffy's is exactly. Everyone doesn't know. Vegapunk then says, even in, even in the oldest of books on devil fruits, there is no such thing as a gum gum fruit. He continues by saying, Luffy looks just like a god that only appears in old texts. That warrior of liberation is Nika, the sun god. He's been erased from history. But as long as people wish for his existence, then he'll never truly disappear. All things are brought into this world with hope, even the devil fruits. Even devil fruits uh, have a possibility for human evolution that someone desired. All of the powers represent the many branches of the future of humanity, but that unnatural status is loathed by the sea, the mother of nature, a fitting punishment for its uh, sin. Those powers exist in different dimensions dreamed upon by someone else before them. This is only my theory. So we don't need to debate if God exists or not. Isn't that fascinating? What did you think about all of this info that Vegapunk dropped, Sebastian? Okay, so Vegapunk was out here just dropping so much lore and so much information. I was like, yo, this is kind of wild, but like I should have expected it. It's Vegapunk, right? Now, I read the TCB scans first, yeah. right? And they do have a very different connotation for what Vegapunk is saying here. So in TCB, it was saying, like, in the old books, there's no such thing as the the Gomu Gomu fruit, right? Yeah. In, implying that in the newer ones, there is. In the, in the Viz translations, it's saying in none of the books. So there is never been a Gomu Gomu referenced, right? It's always just been the Nika fruit or Nika's abilities, right? So that's two completely different things. And, like... I guess we, we have to go with the TCB, I mean, the, the the Viz translations. So that changes it a lot, like, the context of, like, Luffy's having his fruit. Because it's not just, like, it's basically Luffy went, oh, it's rubber. Mm. Versus it being rubber. You know what I mean? Like, it just was rubber and now it's something else. So that was wild to me to hear that, um, to, to read that. I did want to say, because it, it, a little more beyond even the Vega Fuck stuff, the, those two colors, those two giant spreads were really dope to me. I yeah. really loved them, seeing Luffy just laughing and all the stuff. And the clash with Luchi was dope. But beyond that, Vega Punk's speech about the Devil Fruits and being something that humanity has desired, um, an evolution of, that we see within ourselves or something that we would want, that's really interesting because... So we had a conversation in our Discord in regards to whether Devil Fruits are man-made or they come from nature. Right, very recently, like literally, like last week, like somebody created a form, and I was saying they come from nature, right? Because or they they have to be man-made, because the fact that things like rubber, things like weapons are becoming fruits, but now it's seeing that it's really just desire and somehow the will to have these things exist or to have these abilities, capabilities exist, you can spawn fruits. So it's like man-made from desire, but it's nature-made from will if that makes sense which is like a combination of the two and i'm like i don't even know if that makes sense yeah you know what i mean like you can think something even if you just are a person you just think and will it and then it's like the whole show is about will and willpower and and, and drive and things so i was really fascinated when i was reading that bro i was I, I didn't know how to go with it i was like i need more context to what he was saying mm -hmm. um because at the end of the day he did say it was a theory so that's the other part. Like, I think Oda wants you to take everything that Vegapunk says to be factual, 
But even he says, this is my theory. So there could be a different answer that's real or that's the, the answer when we get to like Raphael or when we get actual ancient kingdom like flashbacks and lore. So I think probably a good like 80% of what he just said was real or, or accurate. Mm-hmm. And there's like a small 20 that's like, we'll flip it on his head a little bit. Okay. Um, but that's new that you just said that. Yeah, I mean, I just, the fact that he said it's a theory. Mm. It's all, I was reading it I was like oh this is fact this is fact this is fact mm. and then he's like this is my theory and I'm like obviously it's Vegapunk we should be taking everything he's saying to be accurate but it's like yo the fact that he said it's a theory means there's another avenue here that we're not exploring or that we're not discussing yeah um, beyond that some, I think somebody one of the other One, one Piece YouTubers I can't remember who it was was talking about how with the other dimension right mm-hmm. Is that Oda inserting himself into the story, right? <laughs> like it's his, it's him dreaming this up and cry. Maybe, but then yeah. they say you don't have to worry about God. So I'm like, I don't know, man. It's just it, these are the questions we need answered. And it's like Oda does this thing where he'll give you the answer and it just raises more questions, you know? Yeah. But that's all I got. What you what you got? Um. <clears throat> so I wasn't a fan of mm-hmm. like. The Luchi versus Luffy and Luffy going into Gear Five. I thought it was yeah. like, I was like, yo, it shouldn't even be an issue it, for like Luffy to just dominate mm-hmm. because this is like saying Kaido versus Luchi. You know, like we mm-hmm. already know, no matter what form Luchi goes into, it, it's just his hockey is not there, mm-hmm. and we know that needs to be there, right? Um, it was very interesting because when I was reading it with Chestnut, I felt that 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 dislike, but through with me reading it with her. I started to realize, like, I'm not even focused on the fight anymore. Right. It was more like I'm focusing on other things. Can I say something yeah. real quick? When I tell you right now, them fighting was the least relevant part of this. I know. It was literally only to get the ex- the the lore dump or the yeah. exposition dump from Vegapunk. They needed Luffy to be in Gear 5. That's it. Like, Lu- like I don't think Luchi is really doing... We'll get to that later with the end of the chapter, mm-hmm. but... We just needed Vegapunk to see Luffy in this form. Yeah. That was it. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think he's pushing Luffy. I don't think there's anything like that happening, you know. But we needed Vegapunk to see it so that he could talk about the Nika thing. But yeah. Go on. So, like, even with that, and I agree with that, mm-hmm. the fact that we know that Kazaru was coming, I would have liked to see Kazaru be the one be the one instead yeah. of Luchi. Because mm-hmm. I just feel like Luchi's a cool character, but, like, I just don't appreciate his character post time skip Mm -hmm. i don't understand how he could possibly be at this level without any battle history that we know of Mm -hmm. and you know i brought up this very interesting point with chestnut was that when it comes to zones and them awakening i think that since we have levels to zones like zone is a general category and then we have subcategories so we have like mythical legendary or ancient i Mm -hmm. forgot which one it's called and then regular zones. Even even like carnivorous, they had like a little back in Any's lobby. They would break down like, oh, yeah. I'm a carnivorous zone, so I'm stronger kind of thing. But, yeah. So basically, I was saying that maybe Luchi awakened his devil fruit a lot faster than someone like, you know, Queen or King or Kaido. Even you know, I'll get into that in a little bit. But it's because he's a regular zone, so mm-hmm. it probably has less requirements mm-hmm. in order to awaken it where it would be harder for like an ancient zone in order to do so, or even a mythical, right? Like, for example, uh, Luffy's devil fruit, as we know, devil fruits have their, their wills of their own. Mm-hmm. They generally go to people that fits that devil fruit. And Lawrence brought this up before that every devil fruit mimics a person's personality. So right. Ace with fire, Dofi with string, Aokiji with ice, mm-hmm. Akainu with magma, so on, so on, right? But the Devil Fruits actually bring themselves to their users. So it brought itself because Luchi has a very, you know, carnivore personality where, like, he just wants to kill everything. So for him to activate his Devil Fruit, it probably didn't take much. Meaning he he probably doesn't have Mm -hmm. he doesn't have to have a certain amount of hockey. He probably doesn't have to die the same way Luffy does. He probably doesn't need Conqueror's hockey in order to do any of these things. Mm -hmm. I think that when Luffy became Nika... He had to have the voice of all things. Yeah. It was like he There's had to check to off yeah. everything in mm-hmm. order to make this Nika fruit do what it does in order to awaken it. 
And I think that was like a really interesting point. And it's one of the things that I started to be like, I don't like Luchi in the story, but I accept that if his devil fruit allows him to awaken because it takes less to awaken it, I accept that. Or it could be like Vegeta in like Dragon Ball GT, where like Bulma would shoot Blutz waves and yeah, yeah, yeah. it turned him Super Saiyan 4. So I'm hoping that since the lack of battle history and adversity that we haven't seen post time skip will actually give us that explanation to where this is like, okay. Because this seems like he's being power scaled up unnaturally. Yeah, I, I get that. I think the fact, what Kaido said about when your mind and body match up to what your devil fruit is. Mm -hmm. Luchi, like you said, he has a lesser fruit than like Luffy has. And his mind and body, he's always training, whatever. But it's like the nature of the fruit that you were just talking about with the personalities. Everything that Luchi's about is represented in what his fruit is. Mm -hmm. It's this predatory, like stealth kind of mission where he's, it's about killing. Mm -hmm. He's able to easily gravitate to that or easily dive into that aspect of himself. Yeah. So it's like he was able to match the mind and body up easier with a lesser fruit than Luffy was with mm -hmm. his fruit or other, like a Kai, like people are talking about Kaido and the Azure Dragon, what the him matching up that would be, right? Yeah. And what the wishes of that would be. And like, I don't know. There was a whole other point I was going to bring out, but you probably have more you got to say. So yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah let you going. So yeah. it's um, it, it kind of when I first saw it and I was reading with Chestnut, I put my head down as soon as I saw him, like with the cloak. Yeah. And I, was I, I saw that it awakened, and it kind of made me frustrated because I was like, listen, like Kaido's out here. We had King, we had Queen, we had Jack, we had a whole army of Zoans, and none of them were awakened. And the fact is. No matter how much people want to downplay Kaido and disrespect him, the man knew what it took to awaken his devil fruit. And the fact is, we don't know if he did or not. Mm -hmm. And it's really frustrating for me because this is where I feel like Oda's so great, but at the same time, he has a lot of downfalls. And one of his downfalls is leaving what happens in the arc up for interpretation mm -hmm. instead of giving us a clear... Um, understanding of what's actually happening, right? Like, we don't know why he didn't go full awakened. But mm -hmm. people are like, well, it's due to his personality. Well, I, that that, that kind of contradicts devil fruits in general because each devil fruit matches the personality of the person that's wielding it. Mm -hmm. It just depends if their willpower is strong enough to take it to such heights. And we know Kaido in the show right now is number one for doing such things. And he has the understanding. So why wasn't he awakened? You We'd know have to know the nature of what the, the fruit wants. Exactly. But, but it's a dragon. I assume it wants to be the strongest and all that stuff. Yeah. He was embodying that, I guess. I mean, there's a lot there. Yeah, um, it's, it's a lot to talk about. But, mm -hmm. you know, when we go into the... Um, when we go into, like, the Vegapunk explanation of what devil fruits are, mm -hmm. I love the fact that, like, desire got taken down a level because TCB spoke about desire a lot and willpower. But it turned out like the actual translation was it's about hope. Yeah. And like when you think of like all these pagan gods, right? Like a lot of people worshipped like uh, Zeus and Poseidon and, you know, you know, all these gods, different gods. Right. They o they were always generated out of people's hopes to make life easier. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that like Vegapunk brought this up, that devil fruits themselves, they never grew off trees. Like, people always assume that there was a tree that just spawned devil fruits. But when we saw a devil fruit appear, the devil fruit just appeared within an apple out of nowhere. Well, that, it still could. I mean, in my mind, like, Caesar was running an experiment. I think fruits could still be growing off trees. It would just be through hope. Like, somehow that hope or that will or that desire yeah. is going into the tree and spawning a fruit. I, that's my idea. Yeah. But... But the thing is, I think that everybody thinks it's a, a uh -huh. tree, but I think that right now we just discovered that it's not a tree. Mm. I think that they just spawn randomly. Mm. The same way gods would spawn randomly, right? Because gods aren't technically birthed. They're mm -hmm. just created through some other way or shape, which is through hope. And this is where it comes into dimensions. So when Vegapunk speaks about dimensions, he's not talking about like the multiverse. He's not talking about like there's another dimension that we could possibly go into or start doing uh, time... Mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. warping or anything like that like messing with time going back and going to the future i don't think that's it 
I think literally he's just saying like everybody has their own dimensions within, within their mind. And when it's created, it comes from that dimension and then just spawns into a fruit, okay. which is the person's hopes and desires. So if a person's like, damn, I wish I could heat the water up. They have the heat, heat fruit. Mm -hmm. I wish I could be a magma man. It would make my life easier. Yo, how? Magma comes to be. Yo, how? Well, this is no, how. No, this in my head, like, that's yeah. how. Well, this is how, though, too. It's ah, through sweet. it's through willpower itself. No, I just mean like how would being a magma oh, make yeah, your yeah. life easier? Well, it's it's just weird. Like like mm -hmm. people think of like fertility and like yeah. you know what I'm saying like being fertile. It's like yeah, I mean, there's maybe, a fertile fruit or fruit out there well, somewhere. Well, magma lava it makes islands, right? Like that's yeah. how they you could whatever. I'm yeah. I'm in my head, whatever. But it's just to say like this is where it's coming from. I don't think it necessarily determines that there's actual dimensions. Mm -hmm. I think that it's just people's minds and what they hope, and then it just comes true. And what's really fascinating about that is that when Vegapunk talks about the evolution of a devil fruit, the evolution of humanity, right? Mm -hmm. This is where, like, this gets a little tricky for me. So you remember my, my Blackbeard uh, is a fraud theory, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying, like, when you, when you have a devil fruit, Usually, the previous user's will is inside the devil fruit, too. Mm -hmm. I think that once a devil fruit is consumed by the person it wants to eat it, and then that person dies, and it continues to another person, it, can evolve. it continues to evolve through mm. each person, much like one for all in My Hero Academia. Now, this gets into my... This, it's so funny. I sound like par now. It gets into my other theory mm -hmm. of the two Joy Boys. Mm -hmm. There's a Joy Boy of the Night, and then there's a Joy Boy of the Dawn. I think that necessarily you don't have to have the Nika fruit in order to be Joy Boy. I think that anybody can be Joy Boy if it's based only on devil fruits. So I believe that everybody is a candidate for being Joy Boy of the Night or Joy Boy of the Dawn, depending on which fruit has uh, evolutionized to that certain point that they are going to be uh, the next incoming threat or the next savior. So for example, Lucci mm -hmm. right now has black, uh, he has a black mm -hmm. uh, scarf, right? Well, he might be a candidate for Joy Boy of the Night candidacy, mm -hmm. but his fruit hasn't evolutionized to the point where it can be considered that he's going to be right, the final right. opponent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so while that is dope, I don't think you need to take it as far as Joy Boy candidacy with them. I think the the piece of the willpower of people who had the fruit prior mm -hmm. and you evolutionizing the fruit to beyond because mm -hmm. you're able to go further with the fruit than they were. Yeah. I think you can go... It could very much well be Joy Boy of the, the Night and the Dawn, because I agree with the theory. I just don't... The way your candidacy works, based off your theory, yeah. Lucci wouldn't be that. He doesn't have a promise or a dream no. or anything. He doesn't have any of that stuff. He just has mm -hmm. fruit. And it's like, I don't think it needs to be a, a Joy Boy candidacy in that light. I think he could have evolved his fruit beyond whoever had it before him, though. Yeah. So... And that was the other thing I wanted to bring up with, like, the clouds. Mm -hmm. Like, Yamato had those clouds. Yeah. Luffy has the clouds. Mm -hmm. Luchi has the clouds. Is it just... I assume it's just the Zoan thing, right? Or Zoan thing. Well, we don't know yet. All right. Because we haven't seen... Mm -hmm. uh, we only We've seen... We've seen several Awakened users without clouds, though. Like, Katakuri and Dofi yeah. didn't have clouds. They didn't. But so, it th there's different types of Awakenings, right? For mm -hmm. each one. Like, we, we know that... Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll, I'll get into that a few. But I do want to say one thing. The reason why I believe that Lucci may be a candidate for Joy Boy of the Night as well is because through that evolutionary thinking, I believe there's also a cyclical nature of Joy Boys that actually either bring the dawn or the night. So mm -hmm. we know that the previous Joy Boy 900 years ago was the Joy Boy of the dawn, but he ended up failing, Right. So that means that the Joy Boy of the Night had its turn. And yes. the reason why I say this is because when there's day, what comes after? The night. And then what comes after the night? The day again, right? So if it's following that pattern, that means that the Joy Boy of the Night won during Joy Boy of the Dawn's time, which mm -hmm. is why he failed his promise to the fishermen. And then that person is probably just Emu. Yeah. Emu is the Joy Boy of the Night. So now we're going to have the Joy Boy of the Dawn. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so, so it's like, funny you say this because now I'm getting Game of Thrones vibes. It's just been a long night under Emu's reign. Yes. And now we're late, waiting for the... Yes. So I mean, yeah. This is what I'm starting to think that it's a possibility that maybe technically 
Joy Boy of the previous, Joy Boy of the Dawn that lost 900 years ago, his devil fruit might have not been the Nika fruit. Mm -hmm. It might have been a completely devil fruit, a completely different devil fruit that evolutionized to the point that it was the top runner to be the Joy Boy of the Dawn. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like Luffy's is next in line, but that gum gum fruit is just a, a, a gum gum fruit that, you know, was waiting its turn to mm -hmm. a degree. Mm -hmm. And I think that every devil fruit is waiting their turn. Now, the biggest question is like, it depends. It yeah. depends if it's just devil fruit related. But the I devil fruit the is will, interesting. The way the way they focus it, will is probably still like you said, end all be all. It's the bigger factor than the devil fruit itself. So yeah. But we gonna have to see. It was a real interesting chapter, man. Real interesting. Yeah, I don't. You know, there's so many other things I want to bring up that I'm like forgetting right now. But it was just really interesting to read the Viz translations, and I was thinking to myself like, you know, there was an SBS where. Um, somebody asked Vegapunk, I mean, asked Vegapunk, asked Oda if he could explain what devil fruits are. And then he was like, well, there's going to be a professor one day that will do that. Yeah. So, like, we literally just got to that that panel, that page. And we still don't know. And we still don't know. And yeah, it actually Oda, brings up more questions than anything else. That's Oda, bro. That's his MO. Yeah. Answer some, create more questions and more theories. And this is going to spawn thousands of theories, bro. Yeah, it will spawn thousands. a million things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was very interesting to see that Oda's once again playing between the lines of history and imagination. And I did want to bring this up. Mm -hmm. um, so Vegapunk's design is based off of Einstein, right? Mm -hmm. One of Einstein's most powerful quotes is that imagination is more important than knowledge. Mm. So when, hey. you, when you look at this panel, right, mm -hmm. and you start to think about that quote, it seems like Oda's using that quote directly. And he's basically yeah. using it to, like, explain how devil fruits come to be. And it's through imagination. Imagination. Yeah. There's no limit to what we can <laughs> imagine. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, you know, I, I was, uh, we're not done with the chapter. We still have to read a yeah. little bit more. But when I looked at this page, man, I was just like, yo, me and Chestnut were going at it, bro, for, like, a minute. I think we made, like, 20 theories, no joke. And, like, it, it just kept going, bro. Like, we couldn't stop. So... Um, yeah, I think I think we're past yeah, this. We Do you have anything past. more to say? Uh, just slight things. Um, I love Luffy versus Lucci in the background with all the com comedic yeah. stuff, like the finger thing and the yeah. eyes and just him laughing. I thought that was dope. And the Straw Hats reactions. Yeah. I think we needed to point that out just in general. Like the end of page, whatever page that is, the double spread with Nami, um, Robin's face, Sanji, Frankie, Usopp's face, they're all just in awe of like what they just heard. Because they're like, yo, Luffy's just Luffy. And they're like, nah, he's a god now. And they're like, wait, 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 wait what? Um, also, the callback to Luffy and Luchi doing the, the, yeah. the clash and the final. The panels are actually the same, too. It's the, it's the same. And yeah. I was like, yo, that's so dope that he would do that. Um, I just, I like it. Even if even if I just don't agree with, you know me, I'm a power scaler deep down. I just, like, it's like, yo, this is fire. But it's like, yo, this, this shouldn't be happening. Um, but I know it, I, it is what it is. Uh, we can move on. Um, I don't know if you want to do the um, sponsor now. Yeah, yeah, Marv, let's do the sponsor. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe you're having trouble sleeping, difficulty with a relationship, or just struggling from low self-esteem. Listen, I've been there. We've been there. If so, then today's BetterHelp wants to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. Talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your own convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire, simple as that, to help assess your specific needs. And then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule a secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. I happened to sign up at one point regarding my confidence issues. Next thing you know, my confidence issues are not issues anymore. I'm doing pretty well in that area. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Special offer goes out to all that One Piece Talk listeners. 
You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-O-P-T. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-O-P-T. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's do the Super Chats. Uh, yeah, we have a couple Super Chats sitting uh, before we get back into the chapter. We got a $2 Super Chat from our guy, Jacob mm-hmm. Tiffany. It says, we need a stream where the whole T.O.P.T. cast is buggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Absolutely not. No. No. <laughs> I don't do CD, that. do not Super Chat if oh you heard that. God. You better not. Oh, man. Uh, we got another $2 Super Chat from Benjamin Figueroa. It says, Kaido has the body, but not the mentality. Yeah, that's um, a, I don't I don't get that. I even we stated that before. Yeah, Everybody it, states that. I think it really comes down to what the willpower of the Azura Dragon is. Like, I figured everything Kaido was doing was meshing with it. I'm not as cultured as other people. I, yeah. I saw a lot of different. This he, is what he just didn't have the about. cloak. Yeah, and they were like, "Well, he was using flame clouds," and yeah. I'm like, "Nah, bro." Yeah, it's not and it's the same, just bro. come on, bro. It's not the same. Um, I, that said, I, I am one of those people that think Kaido probably was awakened, um, mm. and we just didn't get the, which is a knock on Oda. I know, I, I know I'm the Oda defender of the podcast, but yeah. if he was awakened and using it, we should have been told, we should have been, it should have been highlighted, it should have been something that we said, mm-hmm. it should not have been left for the reader's interpretation, uh, to assume something is an awakening. Just tell me, what, what, what harm is that? Yeah. What harm would that have been to tell me that he was using? Listen, his man. Bro. So, they they be they be want to put Wano in the mm-hmm. S rank, bro, for arcs, man. I'm telling you. I still got an A rank. I just don't listen, think it's bro. S. It's, a, it's a B plus, bro. Ah, it's a. It's, it's a. a, a it's a B plus, bro. It's a. It's a. It's a. Uh, we did get real quick before we get back into the chapter yeah. a twenty dollars super chat from CD. <laughs> it says, "Oh, I heard that. Get the poll going, Marv. <laughs> Hashtag Buggy Gang T O P T." No. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, we get back to the chapter. Okay. Um thank you guys for the super chats, by the way. Um let's go into the next one. All right. So, next we see Santumaru uh makes an appearance. He was off today. We see S Hawk, S Snake, and S Shark before him. Vegapunk tells Santumaru that CP0 is here to assassinate him and he needs protection. Santumaru says that he'd be a traitor. And then Vegapunk guilt trips him into basically protecting him. So Sentumaru caves in and protects him. Due to the Seraphim's programming, they have a hierarchy of people that they will listen to. CP0 are very last of that pyramid. Uh, Sentumaru tells their S bear to attack them. Luffy and Luchi are still fighting in their awakened modes. Jinbei notices he has a clone. Sentumaru talks to Luffy and Sentumaru tells Luffy that they're still enemies, even though he's going to help Vegapunk. Then we see Luchi puncture a hole in Sentumaru's chest cavity, causing him to fall. Luchi now says that the Seraphims will only follow their orders. What did you guys, uh, what did you think of this chapter? Uh, the end of the chapter, so. Yeah, it was also fire. One, is dope seeing Sentomaru, right? Even if he got clipped like that. Yeah, he gosh, got clipped. Gosh, damn. Yeah, I, had, yeah. I had higher expectations Yeah, I did, that. bro. I did. Um, but even just... Even just the breakdown, one that colored that co- that double spread of like Sentomaru with the the Seraphim, I thought it was cool. Like we had like back to back to back really cool mm-hmm. double page spreads. Um, I noticed that the Seraphim are wearing the same boots. That they are the, 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 the Yeezys. Yes, yes. Um, and you you were, you were looking at for fashion, I guess. I was talking about the fact that Vegapunk controls those, or Shaka was controlling the the feet of the Straw Hats before. Yeah. So that could help them in their fight because now they're going to have to deal with Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, true. I don't know how effective it'll be. I don't even know if it'll come up, but it's something that he can do. Um, a lot of stuff went through my mind when I saw the Seraphim. One, would the S-Snake Seraphim even attack Luffy if the willpower of oh, Boa yeah, Hancock is inside of her? Um, Jinbei's nod to, to the... <laughs> the Yo, that's one my that, kid. The like, um, he was like, Yo. I'm out here slanging beach. He said there was that one black jaw from way back. <laughs> Damn, it got me. Yeah, um, I knew that. I shouldn't have ate so much, man. <laughs> um, Corn bear was crazy. I thought it was too funny. The uh, Sentomaru getting uh, clipped on his day off. Yeah, how you come into work on your day off and get <laughs> killed? I know he's not dead, but you know what I mean. Like, come <laughs> on, bro. Come on, that's like the biggest L you could take. I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for my fucking life. <laughs> um, but the hierarchy, I thought that was really, 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 really important to deal with um, or to talk about because 
All right, so one, do you believe the accuracy of the hierarchy that Stussy, or that was shown by Stussy? Yeah, Wait, I think you I believe it. it? Yeah, 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 I don't know if I believe it. I think there's another person, whether it's Dragon or, or Vegapunk's actually at the top above the others or, or something. I don't know if I believe that that mm -hmm. hierarchy, man. But I know that for this arc in its relevance right now, um, it, it's relevant and, and Sentomaru is above the chip owners. I love that Luchi was able to forward think in that way where it's like, yo, all we got to do is take out Sentomaru and now we're the people who run the Seraphim. And in my mind, you know how it's something that drew, drew me to One Piece in the first place is that the Straw Hats always find themselves in the worst possible scenario. Mm -hmm. And this is like, it's getting there. It's Luchi, he's at least a formidable com combatant, right? Come on, bro. Listen. All four Seraphim are now controlled by their enemies. Yeah. And an Admiral's coming. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's building towards something that's gonna be difficult to deal with. I don't... As strong as you might think Luffy is, I don't think he can just walk through an Admiral right now. So if he gotta fight Lu Luffy, he gotta fight Kazaru, and whoever else comes in has to deal with Luchi. Mm -hmm. We've already said we could see him fighting Sanji or something. That was before we saw what he's doing this chapter. Um, whole bunch of Seraphim. Yeah, it's not. Listen, we've already talked about potentially sign, uh, uh, Bonnie aging them up in some kind of crazy way where they can even get stronger. I don't know. I just I like where we're heading. Mm -hmm. I love Lucci being the forward thinking. And I say this: there was a lot of Lucci slander from me and this man last week. I will say this: I was impressed, man. I was highly impressed with his showing in this chapter. And to quote Shaq. I apologize. I was unfamiliar with your game. You feel me? Lucci was out here. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. He was cooking in this chapter, bro. He was MVP of the chapter. Listen. He was. We I, got Lord Dumps. We got Sento Maru. We had all types of Seraphims and all that. Yeah. Lucci was the biggest boss of the chapter, bro. Yeah. And Luffy was in gear fifth. How yeah. that possible, man? Shout out to Lucci. I'll, I'll eat my crow when I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, everything you said was valid. Uh, I did notice that the Seraphims all have that liquid thing on their arms. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in what that's about. Um, seeing, uh, Jimbe see, like, a little clone of him, it really was just like, yo, is that my kid? Yo, yo that was, was shook, funny bro. for me, bro. That was really funny. Um, I don't want to get too negative. Do you think, bro? I, I just I just don't I just don't mess with the whole like I, I hope that Luffy's testing out his gear five to Luchi. Yeah. Because there's no way Luffy in gear five should be even tying with Luchi. He he clearly had the upper hand throughout this fight, in my opinion. No, Luchi he was get, trying to he hit him. Get, he yeah, didn't yeah, get he hit didn't, once. He didn't get hit once. There he, was just that one draw where they pushed back, yeah. but that was even a callback thing. I don't think he's struggling. He even tested out new moves, Mole I feel Pistol. You. Yeah, yeah. Mole Pistol was dope. Yeah. I just don't like the fact that, like, I know that Luffy in base mode was just fighting hybrid and hybrid, hybrid yeah. mode. And I know that hybrid mode Kaido is demolishing mm. Luchi. No question. So it's like, I, it just doesn't sit right with me. It mm. makes me feel like Wano's happening all over again, where, like, the power scaling is creeping up and, like, things just don't make sense. As long as Oda is able to get the story out, everything just fits well, and then people make excuses as to why this makes sense. And I'm just like, nah. Like, I, I don't do that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. say, oh, this is why. No, it's like, yo, this literally doesn't make sense and you're reaching. Um, besides that, I love the fact that, like, um, Sentomaru got murked. Because if Kazaro's truly on his way and, like, the odds are stacked against him, which they shouldn't be because Luffy should be able to solo everybody. Um, I think Kazaro actually starts probably attacking CP0. Because if his intention was an operation to go have tea with his, like, nephew, and he finds out that Lucci attacked, wouldn't it be crazy if Kazaro starts attacking Lucci? <laughs> ah, man. See, that's the thing. I don't... It uh, depends on how long we want this arc to be. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> I was like, yo, what if that happens? Like, what if Kazaro, for the first time ever, we see that Kazaro gets mad, mm -hmm. and he starts going, like, hard. Like, he's not lazy-minded anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um... There's a relationship between them. Mm -hmm. Like, even when Sentomaru was on the island, he was calling Kazaro, and Kazaro had him, like, on the Den and Mushi. 
there's some type of care, I believe, between these two characters. Yeah. I don't think Kazaro's just going to take his death lightly if he's super injured like that. I mean, if anybody's a company man, it's Kazaru, bro. That dude don't care. He be doing whatever for Yo, the this world would, government. But I think that this would be actually character development for him because he's always lacked some type of character development, right? Like, he's the only admiral that hasn't had a great showing. He's been kind of, like, absent-minded. Mm -hmm. He's been absent from the story, and he only comes through as a soldier mm -hmm. more than an actual figure within the story. Mm -hmm. Now that we have Green Bull, who takes his place, basically, mm -hmm. I would like to see some Kazaro development. It would be dope. I mean, yeah, it would be dope. It I would just, be dope. I prefer my Kazaru to be a company man, because I need that so, like, Kazaru, Kazaru to be on the, wor the world government side when it pops off and I get yeah. my admiral fights. But... He could be torn in this situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's cool. So what I think is going to happen is like, all right, so I'm going to just predict something right now. I think that Kazaro is going to come through. He's going to see that Santamaro's bodied. He's going to say who did this. He's going to go. We're going to see something different we've never seen from him before, and then he's going to attack Luchi. After that, I think the Seraphims are going to be on the attack, but Kuma's going to show up, and Kuma's somehow going to dismantle or have authority over the the other pa uh, Seraphims, mm -hmm. and he's going to tell them to stand down or blow them away right then luffy is going to like see the fight between like kazaro and luchi and like they're still going to try to get off the island but kazaro is not going to let them and since it's going to be a different kazaro i think that that's when we see luchi i mean luffy versus kazaro mm -hmm. and then we see uh kazaro actually awaken we see a logia for the first time awaken <sighs> I would love to see Kazaru. I think that's how him. Egghead goes. I don't know if it's going in the way that you're saying, but I need to see Kazaru awaken. That would be yeah. fire. Um, I think we get either Kazaru versus Luffy or Kazaru versus Dragon, which I think could be dope. I don't think Dragon's coming. I, I still do, bro. Still it would. Do. He wouldn't get there as fast, you know. Like I think this is happening way too fast. Depends. They're not staying there for more than a day, bro. Depends. How are they gonna get there? It depends. Oh, I forgot. You think Dragon just can do anything? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right you're right hey man um all right uh we got another 50 dollars super chat from our guy joy boy mark thank you so much joy boy it says with it confirmed that the seraph being clones do you think that boa will fall the boa seraphim will fall for luffy i can see oda having the real boa and seraph fight over luffy uh, i touched on this just a little bit ago um not too heavily but totally i totally think we could get at least a gag in which she gets ordered to attack Luffy and she just doesn't. Um, there was even a meme on our Discord that, mm. that showed it. It was really funny. It was like Luchi telling her to attack Luffy and she looked at him and then she just attacked Luchi instead. It was funny. Um, um, what about you? Do you think you see that or not? What is it again? The is it from Boa Seraphim. Is it from Joy Boy, right? I mean, yeah. Mark? Yeah. Uh. Well, you did mention that. Yeah, slightly. I didn't touch too deeply on it, but I, I think because they talked about not being able to erase the wills of stuff, like to start this arc, arc when they were doing their experiments. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember which. It depends. I think that's when we go into like, you know, Vegapunk just went to Devil Fruits. He he probably, he might talk about willpower next, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was always suggested, like he can transfer wills over. Yeah, that was and like that a was whole... like the most dangerous thing for me. But that was a whole thing where it was like, oh, I couldn't take away this will or this thing from the shark thing mm. right like i couldn't separate it mm. i don't remember which um well it depends lilith. i think it was a lilith well it depends because there's a there's maybe he you're right it was lilith yeah so she said that so like if that's the, still the case with even the the seraphims well the seraphims are basically blank pieces of paper uh -huh. so if you can copy a will and throw it into it it won't necessarily fight against the the will being inserted right and that's probably what happens with like the current animals that vegapunk has tried to have control over is that they already have wills so if he tries to like control it when it's already of its nature it probably wouldn't happen but if he could take the nature of a willpower and put it into something that's like a blank piece of paper there would be nothing combating mm -hmm. and it would represent the the devil fruits themselves right because you can't have two devil fruits in one person because the body your body would fracture mm. it says like the two devils would fight within each other right mm. what if will powers work the same way because at this point it seems like devil fruits and wills are synonymous it's just that wills are the foundation of devil fruits mm. i don't know 
Yeah, I, mean, I really be theorizing now. You, you do, bro. I'm out here, I'm bro. happy. <laughs> happy about it. But yeah, I mean, it's just the two of us, so we could probably get the calls early today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything, unless you have more you want to say about the chapter. No. You want to apologize to, to the Lu- Lucci slander? Nah, you don't? Nah. All right. No, no, no. Like, like, if it wasn't for Chestnut, this chapter would easily be like a seven out of ten for me because of the Lucci. <laughs> Everything that Lucci was involved in. But Come other on. than that, Lucci like the cha- was fire. Every time Vegapunk was on screen, it was amazing. Listen, Lucci was fire in this no, chapter, no, no. bro. No, no, Acknowledge no. that. No, no, no. I do want to say one thing. I want to say one thing that TCB did that was so much better than the Viz translation. Handgun is such a better name for an attack than hand pistol. Like. Yeah. Like, why, bro? Hand pistol? Seriously? <laughs> Come on, man. I know it's small, but... Yeah. That, that was dumb. Anyway. Yeah. Shout it, out to TCB. Uh, you know what's interesting, too? It's like the White Warrior of Liberation. Yeah. And it was it was very interesting, because I think Chestnut brought up the fact that she believes that when Joy Boy existed, and he might have had this devil fruit, he extended his voice of all things to all the people, which made them... Either it either boosted their willpower mm-hmm. to give them also the voice of all things. So when their desires went out into the world, that might have been like how devil fruits were created. So I feel like the Hidden Island came up with this theory so long ago, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the reason why we love Hidden Island because it's that video. And it was the devil fruit origins. Yeah. And he basically said that the Joy Boy of the previous, um, in the Japanese culture... They believe that there's voices in everything. So there's voices in the headphones, the TV, Mm -hmm. the table, our socks, our shoes. There's voices in everything. He was able to take the voices of those things and put it into a devil fruit. But what if it's like Joy Boy himself used the voice of all things to give everybody a connection for between him? And then they all spawn their own desires and hopes. And then it created the 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 uh the devil fruits that everybody thought about or like hope that would make their life easier mm. hence that's why like the d clan or whatever was able to do such things in this ancient kingdom and and, and to tell you the truth the ancient energy that vega punk was probably talking about what what's super unlimited willpower will like oh man so it's like what if, what if what if they they powered through will like it's so crazy because this is just a never-ending cycle of what i'm talking about but i promise you it makes a little bit of sense Dude, you just blew my mind what if the what if the ancient power source is just willpower so you know you know what's interesting about that too you remember what vegapunk said in that same chapter he said energy is everywhere around us mm. he did and willpower is everywhere it's everywhere Any, anywhere and, and, you know, anybody and, you, is. and you know why to bring it back full circle because everybody has hockey. Yeah. And that's what Rayleigh said. Or, or can access it. No, it depends if they can or access not, it yeah. and utilize it. Yeah. So what if what if Luffy, through the voice of all things, can help people that can't utilize hockey be able to utilize it, right? So what makes this so crazy is that people like Nami, people like Chopper, people like, you know, Frankie or even Usopp, if they don't have the ability to utilize their hockey, maybe through Luffy's, like, voice of all things, he could... Uh, amplify their abilities a bit and it would make his crew if they lack in comparison to Blackbeard's crew on par mm. this is a whole new theory I just Dude. created but, when I, <laughs> but That's fire though. this I mean, might be it I'm, I don't have a, a a pushback Yeah. you know what I mean I mean as soon as he starts talking about willpowers and, and, and as long as you believe yes it could be anything, bro. It really can. And also, I also thought about it, right, in the chapter when they said people believe in him, but, like, mm-hmm. nobody knows about Nika anymore, yeah. right, except for, I guess, a select few people mm-hmm. that still pray to him. Isn't it wild that, like, who's who by, like, proxy mm-hmm. allowed for this? Yes. So like, I thought that was so funny to me. <laughs> so there, here's another interesting mm-hmm. theory that uh, I think is going around. They're saying that Shiryu was the one that actually told who's who about this. And mm-hmm. this is the reason why he chose to follow Blackbeard, because he probably thinks that Blackbeard might be Nika or mm-hmm. the opposite of Nika mm-hmm. or something regarding that. Well, some people just like the evil hero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
that that's a that's a whole other. And thing. then so this is what I wanted to bring up too. I'm so sorry. Like th there's so many ideas coming to my head right now. So the other part of this too is something interesting that uh, Vegapunk said, right? So he said that mother, the the nature of mother is the sea, mm -hmm. right? So basically, devil fruits aren't born in the sea. They're mm -hmm. born through the imagination of people, right? But the sea is the counter to that because the sea itself is the uh, the one that goes. Uh, I'm going to take those uh, imaginations away, mm -hmm. right? These these hopes away. So it might turn out that Blackbeard's devil fruit, which shout out to Kubo for bringing this up in our Discord last night. He said that Blackbeard's devil fruit resembles Mother Nature mm. because it takes it away takes the devil away fruit the devil. abilities. I mean, listen, y'all got to be, I got a lot to think about. Yeah, I just keep throwing these theories at me. I gotta, I gotta dissect them. I gotta sit with them. Yeah, I gotta think about it. I don't know. Listen, uh, I'm gonna tell you everybody now. Please go watch me and Chestnut's reaction to this chapter because we literally threw out like 50 theories, and mm -hmm. she, she's so phenomenal. She's so talented and intelligent that like she just kept going, bro. And I had to match her, and I was just like, yo, I'm having fucking, I'm, 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 that. I'm having fun, because I was like, yo, I hate. Like, I'm starting to not dislike power scaling, but it's just, like, I don't enjoy it as much as, like, I was enjoying that chapter. Like, it mm -hmm. made me think, like, that 7 out of 10 chapter was an 11 out of 10. Mm. Because now there's just so much to this story that I just wasn't thinking about that I'm like, whoa. Hey, man. That's why we love One Piece, man. I don't know, man. I, I feel like this chapter was a goodie. I think that what Vegapunk said was crazy. And this is the first time I've ever seen, like, a direct disconnection between tcb and viz translations yeah it was like like i was telling everybody as soon as you read it read it now because it's a completely different chapter yeah so um i don't yeah. think i have anything else to say bro yeah, nah, i you mean said a lot but it was a, it was it was engaging it was interesting yeah um, like I, I keep thinking of stuff we have one more super chat that we should hit before we get to calls okay. um what is it? it is a five dollar super chat from our guy nerd taku shout out to nerd taku man uh, it says, popping in to show some love, super wiped out from training. Next time you need a replacement for the twins, hit me up. <laughs> hashtag Taku with Shades. Hashtag Ticket for Hime and Chestnut. <laughs> um, I don't think we, we didn't create a goal for the Hime and Chestnut nah, stuff. But... They, I, I asked them. Yeah. They didn't say anything. Yeah. Um, yo, Nerd Taku, I hope training went well, man. Yeah. Uh, hope it's really good for you. Um, yeah, man. I, I mean, for people that just want to join in on these conversations, tomorrow we're going to have the Voice of All Things Episode 9 with Chestnut and uh, Hime. So I would definitely stop by for that with the ladies. And then on Wednesday, we have uh, Sebastian's Davies Dark Tournament. We're going to be finalizing the rounds of yeah. who wins, and uh, that's going to be exciting too. Um, I don't know what else to say, man. I feel like there's so many great people in our community, and... I don't want no credit for any of the things that, things that you guys do. I just want to see you guys explode. Um, that's like a, a very good thing for me. So believe me, I don't want anything in return. If you guys come up with theories, please just keep just keep pushing them out, and let's just keep having fun. Um, that's about it. I don't I don't have anything to say, bro. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. All right, Marv, throw the number up. Let's let's hear some. Let's hear these people talk. Bro, I'm starving. Yeah, I'm hungry. Like my stomach growling. No. Yeah. Tachi in here going crazy. Listen. Getcha. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, this is Terrence. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Hey, doing Terrence. well, man. What's up, Terrence? What's up? What's up? Uh, not much, man. And uh, if y'all remember when I first when I first talked, I was the one who said Lucy was stronger than y'all thought, man. And this chapter confirmed it for me. So, the thing is, I got so I got two things to say, you know, about the awakening thing. Um, one, I feel what you're saying, Larry, but here's the thing you got to think about. The reason why Lucci is this strong is because he's a prodigy, okay? A natural-born genius. That does he killed not matter. Army Marines that does was, not matter. At the age of tw it does matter. It does matter. It does That's not, why Lucci so strong, too. That's why that's why Luffy's so strong too because he's a prodigy. I mean, he, who killed an army of Marines when he was at the tender age of twelve. 
when you're a natural born genius like that, that means you learn naturally. You get strong quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you know, there's there's the person who has to work hard and who has to train hard to run like a mile in ten seconds, and then there's the person who, like, after one or two tries, can work, run a mile just in, in, in ten seconds. That's the case with Lucci right there. You don't build him up as this 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 prodigy, this natural born genius, and not have him to be this strong. Yeah, that's yeah, why he became. My fault. Yeah, that's why uh, that's why he became a part of CP Zero in just a two year time skip, which the CP Zero just by default is ten times stronger than uh, CP Nine. So, and he and he's like a high agent, so he's way more than just ten times stronger. In two years, trust me, he, he it makes sense to me why he would be. The okay, strong. so who do you fight? Who do you fight? Yeah, we don't know that yet. Okay, we don't, we, know, we, we don't know. Okay, so where did he train? Where did he train? Yeah, we know that he trained with the highest end of the world government and with CP zero training. Plus, we know we also know he you know it. We okay. didn't know that he was on the run for, run for a while after the, any lobby. Okay. Fighting against vice admirals and, and the marines coming after hunting him down. Okay, he trained so, specifically for revenge. Okay, so you know I mean? who who do you face? What? He don't know who he <laughs> faced. Okay, so we you, we you want you, you want to bring it up this who he faced? Yeah, you don't know who he is you, you, he's still a prodigy. Yeah, you said okay, that a prodigy a, would take a, one or two steps in comparison to somebody that has to run two thousand. That's how they would progress. So what one yeah. to two steps did he did he take? We just don't know. Who, we just don't know. Right, we, we just I, I we, rest know, my we know case. one. Step. <laughs> okay, we know we we know one step. Actually, we do know one step at least. Yeah, what was he was that? being hunted down by the whole world government after in his lobby. Mm-hmm. I mean, him and his team having vice admirals, having top marines being sent after him, and um, he trained specifically for revenge. That's what's crazy. And he got so good that people that not only the charges against him was uh, dropped. Mm-hmm. But he uh he got back he got back in and he's now a part of CP zero. So oh, Terrence, one thing. No, no, hold on, hold on. So you're saying that he was getting hunted down, but he also had his team with him that was fighting with him. Like a team of five against no. the whole army. Come on. Oh, man. so wh- wh- who's in his army yo, that you saw? It's the Marines. What do you think? I, I don't know what Marines they were. I, I don't know. You tell me. Right. So so I do want to put push back a little bit on what you said, Terrence, because Larry just fed up about the Lucci hype, which is it's fair. Whatever. It's fine. Um, but to me, the show of One Piece has never, ever, ever, ever been about prodigies, right? It's been about you pushing your willpower to the highest extent, right? So... Being a prodigy got Lucci to where he was pre time skip, if that makes sense. Like he he got to that status there with his prodigy like you know capabilities. But I think something in him had to have been not I don't want to say awakened, but something to drive him further. Maybe it was the loss. Maybe it was losing to Luffy, saying, "Oh, I need to be stronger. I need to be stronger." Something started a will to get him on this path to be stronger as strong as he's gotten over time now i do disagree with larry about like off-screen stuff that he may or may not have done like he could have fought some strong pirates the the pirates that we hear and see about aren't all the strongest people in the world i mean like this there's, there's like a fuji tour existed you mm-hmm. know what i mean like mm-hmm. there's people out there that he could have fought or whatever but mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there i'm just saying the prodigy thing is not why lucy's at where he's at right now no. You know what I'm saying? That was why he was at where he was at pre-skip to me. Where he's at right now is because something in him awoke that made him need to get stronger and start on this path where he can awaken his devil fruit, can push his hockey to higher capabilities, mm. etc. Um, the prodigy yeah. thing is just not what One Piece is about. That's just not the story. So let me ask y'all both a question. What's up? How many awaken zones do we have in the show? Uh, it's been like Six, like that too. Top of my head. I mean, I assume Sengoku's awakened, right? All right, yeah. so we we technically have five, but before Luchi we had four. So we had the three impel down guards, mm-hmm. and then we had Luffy. All right. Uh huh. So, which one had control over their devil fruit? 
Luffy. Luffy. Okay, so what did what did he have Kinda. to? Kinda. Who did he have to fight in order to awaken his devil fruit? Kaido. Okay, so that's the only evidence that we have of Zoans having the capability of probably awakening a devil fruit through adversity, right? So what Luch uh -huh. what what Luch who who was equivalent to Kaido or even Admiral? No, level? You, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold I'm on. not finished. Not I'm not everybody fin has yo, to fight an yo, Admiral or a level person to awaken. Let me finish. <laughs> that's not, that's... Can you can you let me finish without talking? Your your statement is bullshit. Okay. So you haven't heard the end of my question for you to ahead, actually ahead, judge go, my question. Go ahead. So be quiet. Go ahead. So what I'm trying to say before I was rudely interrupted by a weak-minded person weak -minded. is that <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that overall, if Luffy is at this level and we know what it took for him to get to this awakening and Luchi has an awakened devil fruit, but there's no battle history or anybody that has Put it in paper that he has versed either a vice admiral or an admiral or even a commodore or even some other high-ranking pirate in the world for him to obtain his zone awakening. That doesn't necessarily fall on Luchi, but that falls on Oda's writing. And I think that this is just an escape goat to bring Luchi into the story because it doesn't necessarily make sense according to what Luffy had to endure. Oh. We're basically saying that Luffy's a prodigy, right? But at the same time, look how much Luffy had to go through in comparison to somebody we don't know anything about that has never made the papers. Terrence, hold up. Okay, who did Doflamingo have to fight to awaken? Who did Katakuri have to fight to awaken? People can be right. awakened, bro. You don't have to be like, yo, I fought Kaido to awaken. Okay. Luffy had to do that. Okay. Th so that's Luffy's story. That's what Luffy went through to awaken his devil fruit. We don't know who any of those people fought or how they awakened their fruits. No. You're only using Luffy's example to try to base it for the entirety of the series or every other character in the series. You can't do that. He's okay. one of a kind, bro. Okay. You cannot do that. You cannot expect Luchi to have to fight some top tier combatant to awaken his devil fruit, bro. So, I'm sorry. So you mentioned, like, hold on. So you mentioned two people. It was Katakuri and Del Flamingo, right? Yeah. What do they have that Luchi doesn't have? Conqueror's hockey. Okay, so that's but one variable. Even, but hold on, that's though, but one you variable. Didn't, but you what does, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm asking you. I'm asking you another question. <laughs> so what does Luffy have? Conqueror's hockey. Okay, so that seems to be the medium oh my for God, all bro. these characters that have awakened their devil fruits. Okay, so right. Hold on. Do you think? Hold on. You said right or yes? Yes or no? No. Is that a medium? No, because you assume that no, no, that no. you assume that Aokiji and Kazaru and 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 Akainu all awakened their devil fruits when yes. they. Is Aokiji a conqueror's hockey to you? Ho hockey we, user to you? We we don't know. We don't know. But we've always okay. assumed that well, they would have well, to well, be. Well, 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 you think that they were conqueror's hockey? The ones that lost their will, will and got consumed. Clearly the, not. But the, they lost their will because they couldn't handle it. Okay, so that actually fits what I was trying to say. It's mm -hmm. because Luffy is different and Luchi's different from them. The reason why they got absorbed by their personalities is because they probably didn't have Conqueror's Hockey or something else that was a variable that we don't know about. And the fact is, Luchi just having this and it happening isn't natural. It hasn't followed... It actually degrades Luffy's journey just a little no, bit. No, it does not, bro. You it don't know what Luchi not. has gone through. You can't just say, yo, because I didn't see it, I have to just shun the possibility at all. Yeah. He could have fought any number of people to get yeah. to this point. You don't know. You can't just be like, nah, bro. Yeah. Kid and Law are awakened. Is Law a devil? Like, but, like but what are we a, talking but about, bro? But this is also yeah, where... Why does have yeah. But hold on. But also, we're talking... Like, Paramecias and Logias aside, we're talking about zones specifically. We've never heard that Paramecias or even Logias overtake their users. It's only with Zoans because they already have a will inside of them, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the animal, the god, or whatever it is. Okay. But in order for them to actually be awakened, I do think that there's a certain degree of requirements that needs to be had. And the fact is, for Luchi to just get this out of nowhere, meanwhile, he just lost to pre-time skip Luffy, who barely knew Gear 3, and we don't know anything? Doesn't that seem like a little bit like he got power scaled up for no reason? No, there's the thing. There's a lot of time, a lot of things that happen in between his loss to Luffy and now. And we can see about the fact that he just, after his loss to Luffy, he was on the run. He was getting hunted down and being had Marines, had top tier Marines being sent after him. Like, and he was fighting Vice Admiral. We don't know if he fought Vice Admiral or anything like that. We know he was getting Vice Admiral sent after him. He beat the Vice Admiral. 
Lucy was going through a hell right there. He wanted revenge because he lost to Lucy. He wanted revenge because the world government abandoned him. He was going through hell right there. So right there, we know he was going through adversity with, with that that in, in itself. No, we, we don't. Rose. No, we don't. We don't know anything. I just don't think you can discount his journey. Like uh, uh, The whole point of One Piece and the world building is that people are actively going through things yeah. in the background. Lucci was going through whatever Lucci needed to go through to get to this point. Yeah. Same way with Kobe yeah. and those other how, people. People grow, man. How, it happens. Yeah. So, but how do you don't know that if we know that he was getting hunted down after his, after Indy's lobby? We know that he was being hunted down. Okay. We know they were sending Marines after him. Okay. That is hell right. He fell. He literally fell and rose up again stronger than ever yeah. from CP9 to CP0. That's what I was saying. So that, if that's not adversity, how is that not adversity? How is that him not going through something? So so I, I, I heard Marco fight Blackbeard during the Power Mount War. I, too, I heard two admirals fight during the two-year time skip. You know what I'm saying? If Lucci got to the level of Gear 5, where he's fighting Luffy right now, right? Who said he's that? Not, he's not. Who said that? He, he, Luffy is in control. Luffy's not even taking the fight seriously, so he's not at the level of Gear Five. Okay, but at the end of the day, I saw Kaido literally just one shot most people on the show when they got up on the rooftop, or when Luffy was in Gear Four mode. Like he shouldn't be able to even compare with Gear Four right now. And the fact I is, I completely disagree with that. I disagree with that. Just mm -hmm. because he's stronger than Gear Four doesn't mean he's at the level of gear five. My Just point is, my point is that adversity. Okay, so my point is that adversity is going to determine what your willpower should be. And the fact is, there has been no notable names that Lucci has fought during that two-year time skip to give us evidence that he's of that of that that skill. It's just he came out of nowhere, the, and all of a sudden he no, just here's, has here's, awakened leopard form. That's it. No, that's not. That's not. How and he's nowhere. fighting that's gear five Luffy. I think you're ignoring too much of the premise of the show. Uh, Terrence, we got to take other calls, so we got to drop you here, man. But thank you for the engaging debate <laughs> with Larry. Uh, people love debating you, man. They do. Because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Same way you don't. You're so dismissive of other people's yeah. opinions, man. As I should be. All right. Terrible. Yeah. All right, bro. All right. Well, thank you for calling, bro. You're welcome. Mr. Bushido Rock. Exactly. He said, watch Larry react when Gin returns commander level. <laughs> and, and and we're going to be like, oh, he's commander level. He had to do something. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? What's up, boys? It's Villain D. Juice. Hey, hey, the boy. What's up, man? Villain, what's up? We're good. How y'all doing? Doing good, man. How about you? Chilling, chilling. Right. What's up, man? What's your question? All right, bro. All right. Kizaru lands on the island. Which straw hat other than Luffy do you want to see hold off Kizaru? Sanji. Zoro. Oh, I, I, I want Zoro because Zoro got to get his get back, bro. On Sabote, he was like the one that they had to protect from Kizaru. And I know that's probably E to him because of what ended up happening to everybody. So I would love to see Zoro get a little nice little one-on-one -on -one with Kizaru for a short period of time. I don't think he could win or anything right now, but I, I think just some get back, bro. Yeah. Just a little bit of get back right there. You said Sanji. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I say Sanji because he's, you know, Oda's been calling him the fourth. <laughs> and uh, I've always personally believed, like, uh, he barely beat Queen, bro. Like, if we're being honest, like, barely be queen. Like, he passed out from his own attack. And I think that there needs to be some type of, like, get back for Sanji to prove, like, his hockey standards. So I think that if he is to get Conqueror's hockey or to get any of these extreme, con like, advanced forms of hockey, he should probably fight an admiral and tough it out. And I think that this is would be a very good building block for him and put him back into that monster trio status where it's not Luffy, Zoro, and Jinbei. It's more like... Yo, sit back, Jinbei. Like, I'm still third in command. I'm still the third strongest. I'm still the third, you know, most reliable person on the crew. And I think that if that doesn't happen, like, we're always going to suggest, like, he's still fourth on the crew when Jinbei's there. Jinbei's just more of a, like, a pirate wing, like a pirate king wing for me in comparison to Sanji. I just think that Sanji's been super unreliable and super inconsistent and being consistent. 
And Jimbe has literally been that guy. And it's suspected that Jimbe even has conquers. So, in my opinion, it has to be Sanji. What about you, villain? Who do you think? Which straw hat do you think should fight Kazar? I, I want it to be Sanji just because, like, I feel like the last two arcs have given us drastically too much Sanji hype for him to not really do that much. But, like, I also want Egghead to have been Frankie's arc. So, <laughs> mm. if Frankie could just real quick steal the Vegapack technology to hit light, you know? Like, I just feel like that's Frankie deserves a little bit of hype, too. He's been slept on. He can't even get a, a bounty poster with his own picture on it, you know? Mm. Yeah. I, think... I don't need him to win the fight. <laughs> I just need him to hold him off, like, temporarily. I, so, and we get this a lot in One Piece where people who are much weaker than other people clash with people temporarily. We're seeing it right now with Luffy and Lucci. We saw it with Kaido and basically everybody he went up mm. against. Um, we saw it with Big Mom and Marco and, and others. Why, why, we see a lot where people who are just significantly weaker than other people can, for a time, hold them off or, or clash with them or whatever. I still think Frankie's just well out of his weight class there, man. Like, that's an admiral. I don't know that Frankie's mm. ever going to square up with an admiral at any point in the series. Yeah. Um and I like Frankie. I just I, I just placed the admirals probably a little too high um in my ranking. So but I don't know. You you can you see Frankie? Uh if he has those light gloves that can punch holograms mm-hmm. and stuff like that, maybe, mm-hmm. but even then it's like a hockey thing at that point. Yeah, like like Kazaru will still punch Frankie dead in the shit. You know what I mean? Like it's not it doesn't need to be light. Like I don't think he even needs his devil fruit to, to defeat Frankie, maybe I'm too disrespectful there, but yeah, I don't know. Nah, I don't think Frankie really stands a chance in the fight. I just want to see the clash just okay. to show off Frankie's technology to gain something from Vegapunk. Yeah, but even that, like it's not like, oh my bad, but even that, it's not like Frankie would have like created something to allow him to do it. It would just be him picking up something that Vegapunk did that lets him touch an admiral. Like, that's not, yeah, like that's an upgrade, but it's not like a Frankie feat, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I mean, neither is neither is his light beams. He stole those from Vegapunk's Island in the first place. But he he stole the tech body. and then incorporated it himself. I guess if he does that, I thought you were saying just pick the light photo photon glove things up and just use them. Yeah, you know that's not. I don't know. I don't know. Depends, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I'm not here to argue this time. I'm, sh- I'm <laughs> shocked. You said your goal was to argue with Larry. And I was like, yeah, argue like, with him. <laughs> the more active I am in the Discord, for some reason, me and Larry keep agreeing. It's, it's not working out the way it was when I was strictly a fan. You know? <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, man. It'd Listen, be like that. You, you just notice that I make sense and they don't. Bro. Oh, my God. Now, Larry, you still be wild and you're still disrespectful. Um, <laughs> this ain't been a good topic for us to argue about. Yeah. It's, it's coming, bro. It's coming. Just wait on it. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, villain. I hope to see you on Wednesday, man. It's gonna be some highly, yes, definitely, highly impactful debates, man. Oh yeah, it's the, it's the Luffy Nami versus the Admiral, isn't it? I gotta. I might have to stipulate that one, but we'll see. I gotta figure out what I'm doing with that. <laughs> all right, boys. Y'all be easy. All right, you too, man. Have a good Later, night. go. Marv, you have another call? I have a bunch of super chats I could hit. How would you feel if Kaku call? is awakened? <sighs> I'd feel away. Mm, would. Yeah, would you? I would. Okay. <laughs> hey, how's it going? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, what's up, guys? It's Ryanosuke. Hey. Ryanosuke, what's up, Brody? What's up, man? Yo, what's up? Dude, I'm so hyped for this call. So I had the theories about Luffy's dream. I had theories about uh, Conquerors. I had theories about Kazaru when he comes, but... When you guys were talking about Devil Fruits, I went off and I wrote a bunch of notes. Uh, so I just want to share them with you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, bro. All right. So basically what I think, because we're not really thinking about what has been said about Devil Fruits in the story. Um, mm. I think what Devil Fruits do is are they mess with your lineage, your lineage factor and your bloodline elements to become an evolved human that fulfills some wish that people have. Because if you think about it, People say, I'm a light human, or I'm a rubber human, or things like that. So, um, what basically Vegapunk is saying is, when you eat the fruit, it messes with your lineage factor, and it gives you powers that people have wished for that makes you basically alien uh, from another, like, like you're on another level. 
and this is kind of explained by uh by Foxy actually in Long Ring Long Land when he explains that his fruit allows him to emit norelma photons uh, that scientists haven't discovered yet, and explained how his fruit works scientifically. So like he's evolved in some type of way to emit those beings. Um, and for awakening, I think it's like Kaido said, the fruits give you uh, give you abilities and stuff like you're on another dimension, and your body hasn't and your body and mind haven't haven't caught up yet. So basically, uh, when you when you awake, it's like when Luchi, what Luchi is doing. He's a CP nine CP zero agent. He's basically gone on a bunch of stealth mission, missions and hunt and he's basically hunting people like prey, which is basically what he's doing to Vegapunk right now. And uh, he's basically developing uh, traits like a cold blooded killer, like a leopard, and which is why he he's awakened. Yeah, we. I, so I touched on that a little bit when I said um, that his the nature of what he's doing and what he's about is similar to that of a leopard or. He's a leopard, right? Not a cheetah. Yeah, he's a yeah. Stalking prey, like you said, stalking prey, hunting prey, killing people, killing things. Um, I still think we just need more context. No. Yeah. In general. So Rionosuke, what, what would, how would you feel if Kaku was awakened too? Uh, I would not like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has any traits that fit his mm -hmm. fruit, or he's gone through things that would fit his fruit, at all. We'll see. I mean, he's probably not. Right? He doesn't. I mean, I guarantee. If he is, I wouldn't like it. A hundred percent. I mean, most most of yeah. us would would disagree. Would probably disagree. Oh, why would you disagree? He's been through so many adversities and so many battles, and you know he's great, and he can do his thing. <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, you also see, why Kato's not awakened either, because he doesn't have the mindset. He wants to be felled by a better uh, someone better than him. So that's why I don't think he's awakened. Hmm. Maybe, I don't like the fact that he's not awakened. But I think Kaido is awakened. I, I just don't feel like anybody should be like, you know what? This is how awakening works. And then he's like, oh, I don't know how to do it. But I never said I don't know how to do. It. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I think he's awakened. We like just... if he never gave the the exposition of how it works, mm -hmm. I'd have been like, all right, cool. Like I would, you know, I would have been like, all right, this is more accepting. But he legitimately states, this is how it works, bro. I can't do it. But that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, I still think like, he's awakened. I just think it's a knock on Oda that he didn't show it to us. People are gravitating to this Okaido didn't awaken because of the nature of the fruit thing, but I think mm -hmm. it's more likely that he just was and we never saw it. Mm. But that's me. Or we never got it highlighted, but that's me. Yeah. What was your what was your other you you said you had three theories, right? I have three theories, but I actually got work soon, so I <laughs> I can probably just tell them tell them to you uh, next stream. All right, <laughs> all right, all right, no problem. Thank all you, right. Renosuke. Well, I got I gotta run now. See you guys. Yeah. See, See you. Man. Enjoy your work. <laughs> I'm mad. No. Uh, how many super chats we got? Yeah, like four. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll get the super chats. Yeah, we'll do super chats. We'll just yeah. All right, uh, we got a two dollar super chat from Mr. Bushido. It you gotta says, take the number off, bro. Uh, let Larry speak before you prove him wrong. <laughs> I like that one. How's it going? Yeah. You just don't know how to take turns, bro. <laughs> True. You're an immature debater. What, am I? Yeah. You called me weak minded because I disagreed with you earlier today, but I'm I'm the. You kept interrupting me, bro. You were interrupting Terrence. I'd let him talk. Okay. Yeah. He, we gonna watch it back, and he, I'm gonna show he, you. He talked enough. Okay. See, look at you, bro. You're a hypocrite. Just acknowledge that you're a hypocrite. Uh, we got another $5 super chat from Mr. Bushido. It says, Stan Lee once said when it comes down to who wins in a fight, Spider-Man or the thing, he said, whoever the writer wants to win because it's fiction. <laughs> I mean... Listen, bro. We be arguing plot a lot. I don't think we need to in this circumstance. It's, all, right. it's all narrative. <laughs> you just gotta follow narrative and you would understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got another $2 super chat from Mr. Bushido. It says, watch Larry react when Gin returns <laughs> commander level. You pointed that one out earlier. Uh, like, imagine. Like, imagine Gin just comes back, and all of a sudden, he's, like, admiral level. And we're like, oh, that makes sense. He he went through some struggles. Man. He was in a cover story. We don't, you know. Gin actually wasn't in a cover story. He, I think he was. He was in one. Was he? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. He's in like one cover story. 
I don't remember that. Oh, you know. Mm. Uh, we got another super chat from The Last Antari, $10. It says, I don't think Death Awakening has anything to do with your hockey. Uh, or Devil Fruit Awakening says anything to do with your hockey. Hashtag Buggy D Clown. Um, Thank you, Antari. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats, by the way. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can say it, it doesn't at this point. Just based off what Vegapunk said today, the, the nature of Devil Fruits being willpower in general, apparently. Yeah. Um, and how Luffy's Devil Fruit Awakening was working. Um, I, I, I I might disagree with the take, but I actually did like Larry's take on some level with uh, you be, it requiring conquerors to overcome the um, the Devil Fruits, mm-hmm. like for Zons, like mm-hmm. taking over. But I don't think Luchi is a conqueror, so it kind of just shoots it. Oh, why not? Why is he not a conqueror? He's never. Damn yo. He's never shown any oh, conquerors. He's bro. never shown any conquerors. Yo, that doesn't either. mean he doesn't have conquerors though. He might. Damn, I yo. don't think he does. Yo, he probably has future sight too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he narratively, it says he should have future sight. I'm pretty sure he does have future. Yo, sight. narratively, like, he he definitely has. I'm pretty sure last chapter, Rio he, for he, sure. Did he not? He's such an important. What do you mean? You argued so, he has Rio already. He, he has such importance hater, to the bro. arc. Stop hating. Yo, his yo. You're like doing the nasally listen, listen, thing, listen, bro. Listen, this listen, is listen, why I say you're childish, bro. Listen, listen, this is listen. Why. He's also a rival to Luffy, and you know who else is a rival? Kid and Law. Oh my God, he's on par with them too. You know. Just saying. Yo, who you got? Luffy or Kid? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they at, bro? Yo. Where are they at? There's, there's garbage around. Oh, yo. there's garbage there's around? There's garbage around. <laughs> I need your take, bro. Who you got? Luchi. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I'm just, I was just checking, bro. I just like, saw Luchi speed real. blitz. It was Sent real. Sent tomorrow. Bro. And he's clashing with Gear 5 Luffy. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. Kid, to kid has not. to, you know, bring together metal. Before he actually starts fighting, because the dude can't throw hands. Hey man, he was throwing hands with with Big Mom in the pocket, if y'all remember correctly. Yeah, fist to fist, or was it, or was it just metal fist to her hand? He like did the thing on her to change her her ability. Okay, so you know, what I mean? you know he he didn't really touch her. You don't gotta. Since when you gotta throw? Whatever, bro. Whatever. We finally, uh, before we, we close out, we did get another two dollar super chat from Celestial. Celestial probably set a record for his super chats today. Yeah, um, C D is just amazing, bro. Oh man. Uh it says Lucy's trash, period. Hashtag Bucky K. <laughs> I know you probably like that one, man. Listen, man. You know, there's a reason why Blackbeard ain't fighting kid, you know. And it's because he can't blossom in hockey possibly. So, I guess, bro. Listen, bro. Got to face adversity, man. I got to end the poll now, but it was 50-50. <laughs> it shouldn't have been. I honestly if, don't if know. You're, if I you're a conscious know. human being, you'd be like, there is no way think, Rob Lucci, I mean, Kid can match up to Rob Lucci's uh, speed. So, I think Lucci's a much better fighter than Kid is, but By I think far. that Kid has Hawks. Technically. He'd have to stop him and magnetize him immediately. Yeah. But how fast can he do that? I just well, saw Sentinel Morrow get speed blitz like crazy. I mean, like Luffy didn't but, even notice. But kid, him. kids, his whole thing is tanking though. Like he takes attacks. Is Lucci whipping out Big Mom level attacks? Like, I mean, if he doesn't realize that he's getting punctured through the chest, mm-hmm. it's over for him. I don't think it is. He doesn't have future think, sight that we know of. I think Kid could get. Does he have? Does he have advanced observation? I think Kid could get rocked. I'm asking, I'm asking you a question. Does he have ob- advanced observation? No. Does he have future sight? No. Oh. Good he's luck. gonna get good, hit. Good. Good luck. He's gonna get up. Good luck. He's gonna get up. Good luck. <laughs> You're gonna have a whole hole in his chest <laughs> like Ichigo from Listen. Alcaria, and he's just gonna drop to the floor, bro. He be alright. Hey, you know who's gonna have to fight for him? Killer, because Killer's a better fighter than him. Terrible. Uh, we did get two more super chats uh, from the last Antari, two dollars. It says Kid is mid, 
And we got another two from Celestial Donkey. It says hashtag Buggy Gang. But with that, guys, we have to wrap. We appreciate all the love and support. Um, it was a really fun episode. Even Narratively, when... it was a fun episode. <laughs> even when Larry was being a little teenager. I don't even know if I call you a teenager, bro. Yeah. Like a five-year-old out here pouting. I'll be six tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was really fun. If you haven't joined our Discord, please join our Discord. If you haven't subscribed to me or Sebastian's personal channels, please do. We both have theories. Also, if you haven't liked this video, please like the video. It helps us a lot. If you want to comment on Larry's bad takes, <laughs> comment everything you hate about what I talk about in the comments below to boost the algorithm for this video as well. I just want to say thank you as always, Nakama. My name is Larry. What's up? And this is that One Piece talk. Jana. <laughs>